So hello everyone, this is OK here, and I'd like to look at some games in Crazy House 960 that were played last week between Jasugi99, who was playing as Anonymous DQBL, and Katask. Uh, over on the Variants website pychess.org, so it's pronounced PyChess. And it's the first of some of the first games played by both of these players in Crazy House 960 on this new website. Previously, people had played on chessvariants.training. Um, both of these websites, by the way, have been created by our sort of spin offs of Lee Chess and created by Lee Chess developers. Um, and uh, so Jasugi99, aka 12 Team, played a 20 game series of Bullet Crazy House 960. So it's Crazy House, you've got pieces in pocket, uh, but the initial setup is 960, so it could it be the, any of the 960 initial positions. Now, take note that this is Bullet, so there are mistakes because players are trying to move before they've even seen their opponents move. However, I think it's quite useful, despite that, to actually analyse the games for a few reasons. Firstly, it gives you an insight into the intuition of the top players, the kind of moves which are good moves, even if a specific position might contradict that intuition. And secondly, the basic tactical um, patterns that even in 960 the best players often see very, very quickly, uh, and the, the, the weaknesses that they exploit. So this first position, um, so most of this annotation and lines I did myself. A couple of things Opa also helped me add. So thanks, thanks to Opa. Um, so he commented, for example, here that the setup for white and black is, is very nice. I like how the white pieces stand. The rook is fine. The bishop's on the long diagonal, pointing towards the king side. Only the knight on a1 is not ideal. So the knight will probably be coming out to here, supporting the central push. It's very important, just like in chess, to control the centre, to develop your pieces, all the basic ideas. But you also have to be careful of, of um, any sort of subtle weaknesses that are unique to a particular 960 position. But as, as Offa says, all the, all the pawns here are very well defended on both sides. Maybe only this pawn might give some concern. Uh, so e4 makes sense because you have a rook in the center and so you push that pawn. So okay, so let's play through some of these games. e4, knight f6. He says, of course, the computer likes c5, although in normal crazy house you wouldn't play it because there's a king. Um, sorry, because because of the weakness, rather, because uh, of c7. Here, this, develop, this would develop both the bishop and the queen with one move, so c5 is a nice move. Um, Oh, and also, yeah, what he notices is c5 also controls this e5 square, d4, e5. So it's, it's, a, it's a great move to control the center. Okay, but Katas plays knight f6, e5, and knight to b6. An alternative is also going d5, just like uh, the Krosky Gambit, um, which is played in e4, knight f6, e5, d5. Um, and often the best thing to do is actually not to take the piece but to play d4. So this is, but instead of that, uh, Katask here went knight b6, d4. So whites really grab the center in this game. d5, again, not bothering to protect this piece, just going for fast development. c3, knight e4. Knight f3, bishop to f5, and knight c2. So notice he wouldn't want to, despite this knight being an extremely powerful piece, he doesn't necessarily want to trade it and advance a pawn into his half of the board. Um, I can turn the engine on. Um, knight c2, e6. And uh, actually at this point, I need to No, 
now this is when I regret touching things because everything was perfectly set up um, but uh, I'd like to puzzle so um, how to do puzzles so firstly I need to I want to do periodically do a few puzzles during which I'll have to cover this and then uncover it later because I want you to be able to see the analysis in general um, so I'm just going to periodically do cover this up okay knight to e3 now in this position it is black to play and I'd like people in chat to let me know what you think black should play and also if you could let me know how the sound is I mean if I sound is this better yeah let me know if the sound is good uh, or too loud too soft whether it sounds good if there's um, So black to play in this position. So I'm just going to make sure we have people in the house. Not many people yet. And just to see if we have are on Lee Chess just yet. We are on Lee Chess. Okay. So I'm going to just wait a few moments while while people collect, um, and I'm welcoming suggestions for black to play in this position. Okay, so I I guess I'd be waiting. I guess people will collect as as the stream goes on. So I'm going to have to spoil this one um, as we still still collecting viewers. So what black did play was castles. If you drag your king over your rook in 960, uh, you can castle as in normal chess. Um, but there was a much better move for black in this position. Can anyone see it? Last chance. Okay, so here it goes. Knight takes f2. And uh, I'm now going to reveal the analysis. You might take that knight because after all it's hitting your queen and your rook. Um, but bishop takes bishop. Um, and white's best best diagonal, the, the light squared bishop. All his pawns are on dark squares, so the diagonal bishop is a great piece. The dark, dark squared bishop is also a great piece because it's a great attacking piece. But light squared bishop is a powerful piece. Um, it's gone. Instead, black castled. Um, white castled as well c6. Knight takes f5, e takes f5, and bishop takes h6. So with the diagonal piece he's now attacking on g7, and you see how powerful this pawn is in, in the black half of the board. So this is already getting difficult. Takes, takes, trying to defend the dark squares around his king is Katask. Takes, takes, relieves maybe a little bit of the pressure, but then he picks up a knight and dumps the knight on f6, takes, takes, takes. And uh, at this point, black resigned. I mean, the reason he would resign is you can continue with e5, queen g7, knight e7, check, king h8, rook g3, and then you're picking up uh, f5. So the dark square pressure was just too great, and so 12 team took game one. Okay, game two. So now this is the same position, but this time 12 teen was playing black. Knight f3, d5, and uh, this time Katask went for castle straight away. Um, we saw how castles wasn't such a good move for him in the previous game, so he decides to do it, well, even earlier now. Um, so before, maybe before, it's troublesome. e5, c3, pushes. You always have to try and judge whether an exchange is good for you or not, and, and just just to say that the engine reckons that this exchange is actually good um, for white, but I think the reason is quite subtle, um, and it's thinking of stuff like at f7, um, which is quite hard to fathom, and other ideas it's thinking of this, but again, this is quite compl complex stuff involving some kind of exchange of queens and the black king being more open. 
Let's just look at the at f7 idea. King takes f7, knight g5, king drops back, c4, trying to get a trade of queens and just land a queen on f7. It seems like, uh, it seems rather, um, rather brute rather brutish to just go for the queen in so direct a manner, already I've pawn down. Um, quite uh, interesting that, that that works at f7. Um, so it reckoned white really liked this pawn. So I guess f6 maybe was not such a good move in light of all that. So yeah, f6 gives white a slight advantage in this position. There, there isn't any diagonal guarding these light squares. But anyway, let's um, keep going. He pushes knight b3, and now his position's a lot more stable because this pawn, this f6 pawn, is, is eff effectively controlling the knight, as that was the intention of f6 in the first place, and um, there aren't any tricks with this, this, and coming in here. So he comes in knight e5 anyway, takes, takes, and knight e6, takes, takes, f4, rook to g6, so black trying to get an attack going, at g5, knight h4 again trying to hit g2. Nice move here. We can't just that pawn's just hanging because other um, because of the pin on the queen. Or is it? Queen b6 check. So in fact, it reckons just 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 drop the bishop. If if you take the bishop, then there's too much stuff happening on on black's king. Um, but uh, white tried to hold on to the material. Takes takes. And this still looks like it should be good for white with a, a queen in hand and the black king quite open. But um, it's not so clear. Queen at d8, queen at e8, defending, takes, takes. Now this is a move trying to stop the, the, the mate threat, knight at h3. Knight at h3 is a serious mate threat from black. Because if you take it, queen at g2 is checkmate. And if you don't take it, there's a smothered mate. So... White simply addresses that by, by putting his queen on, and uh, but now the queen is on, black can attack it with tempo. Oh, okay, he does that. He attacks the queen again, he has to move it again, and he develops. Takes, takes, he's trying to get in on the attack. It's quite hard, how, how should he continue? He takes, 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 at e2, Looks strong. Knight d2. I have to say, something very interesting here is if rook f2, which would be a, a natural move, there's a very strong move for black, which is queen at d1. If you take it, I'm getting a new queen. If you don't, I'm taking the rook for free. Um, so how do you defend the rook? Is There's no clear way. Maybe knight at g2 defends the rook? Um, so... And the, then the crazy idea from the engine is this, for the point being you can't take um, you can't take this because oh yeah, it's defended. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, rather rather complex ideas. But anyway, um, after this he played this, and that gives a rook, rook at e2. So instead of rook at e2, another idea was knight e2 check. King h1, knight takes f4, and that's quite powerful. Um, you take here, you take here, and you have now a, conti uh, a continued threat. And if, if you went knight here and king f2, which would also be natural, well again, we can just take this as well, and we, we have another square we can come to as well. That's apparently even forced mate for black. So this is a rather uncomfortable position. Okay, rook e2, just going for direct mate on g2, at f2. Rook takes d2. So what's the threat? The threat is that knight was protecting this square. And so the threat is to pick up the queen. So white defends in a, an obvious way. And black went queen at d1. It's a good move. Maybe just a tiny bit stronger. It's queen at e2 is absolutely forced mate. Uh, with the idea being you sack the queen. Um, and you have uh, a knight on e2, which is replaced by another knight, and then queen at b1 is check at g1 is checkmate, something like this. That's if you try to defend on c3. Um, if after queen e2 he tries to go knight d1, similarly you just try and sack, 
takes, takes, bring the knight in, and the queen at g1 is checkmate again. So queen e2 is very forcing. Queen of d1 gave the possibility of blocking that queen, so you can't sack immediately. You still do knight e2. And knight at d3. You could also go queen, at, queen takes c1. If there's a counterattack, then go knight f4. It's, I mean, this sort, of, this sort of thing. But uh, things are not quite so forcing as if you'd gone queen at e2. But okay. Knight at d3. Takes, takes. The game continued, rook e3, takes, takes, takes another knight. Maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Queen takes, bishop at b5 protecting the knight. Knight takes g3 check, takes the rook. Going for this fork, if queen takes rook, knight at f2 picks up the queen. So knight d1 blocks at d2. Defends, doubles up on this. So really just increasing pressure, so black's still in control, but just can't quite break through. White just has a queen left on the board. Oops, oops, oops. He was sacking his queen. Very tricky thing to do in time pressure. Rook takes, and suddenly white is completely winning. Um, and both, both players throwing their pieces around, and it's uh, white who wins. Okay, so that was game two, um, so it was one game all at that point. Game three. Okay, let's just play through them fairly quickly. So this position, we've got a new position on the board where clearly the bishop on the long diagonal is a strong piece. King's in the center. The knights look like they're going to develop towards the center, so that they're not a problem at all. The queen looks like it's slightly problematic, but I guess we'll push the f-pawn at some point. So let's see how both fared with this position. Pushing the pawn in front of the king, instead of in front of the rook. d4, e4. This is the, the 12 teen approach. Um, and of course, this is this does fall for just bishop takes e4, but uh, this is bullet, so both players were just pre-moving. Knight c3 to save that pawn. Knight c6, defending it again. So again, trying to set up a, this is a common idea, trying to set up um, a wall um, a buttress, as it were, against that, against the diagonal. And we'll see. We'll see that um, feature recurring. Knight f6. And castles queenside. Seems reasonable. Uh, it seems reasonable because often against the castle queenside at a3 is a nasty idea, especially in this situation where the bishop is pointing at a3. But the bishop on a1 provides quite decent cover, so it is quite reasonable. G6. That's interesting. Like, why would you want your bishop on this diagonal when it's on a beautiful diagonal already? But um, bishop a6, and the bishop moved to g7. So yeah, I'm, I'm sure maybe the slight positional question mark about that. Uh, again, notice how 12 team builds up a buttress against the diagonal. Queen to f8. Okay, he wants his queen on that diagonal. Takes the knight. Well, that bishop can easily reroute. Um, I was thinking like reroute to here as well. Decides to reroute to beat g7, which is in fact better. Knight to b7 check, takes takes, a3. Okay, so the, the attacks begin on the white king. Takes the knight, takes back, knight to b7, the king moves, knight d3 developing, reinforcing b2, which gets taken, takes back, a3, the bishop moves, and black doesn't have a pawn for b2 just yet. Um, interestingly, there was an idea of at d7 here, which is very strong for white. The idea being that if you move the king ever into this diagonal, it means this pawn can just get taken. But if you don't move it into this diagonal, so I should promote the king takes d7 variation, we then have knight e5 check. Uh, and notice if the bishop takes, we're taking back with another check from the rook. You can block, but then you can take the pawn. And if you try and block on another square, keeping that diagonal open, 
then that leaves open knight f6 check, and still the king has to go onto that diagonal. Bishop here check, takes, takes, uh, and you're going to be taking, oh, it's just checkmates. Yeah, that, that's a complete disaster. If you block on d5, that, that's just a, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Knight f6, bishop at d6, beautiful mate. I mean, that's like, that's like a, uh, a white to play and mate. White to play and mate. Um, nice. Okay, so what actually happened in the game was bishop c3, just saying black doesn't have a diagonal, so I, I, I think I'm safe. Knight at d5. Okay, so maybe, yeah, the bishop is getting kicked about a bit. Um, bishop went back to a1. Again, this is not as good as might have been. And you can see in um, what the engine suggests. Defending here maybe with another bishop, so you're attacking the queen as well. Maybe going a king to b1 if it takes, just take back the knight. But uh, yeah, white played bishop a1 just to try and stop all these tempo moves. Bishop a6, and now played at d7. Takes, brought the knight back, which is under in danger. Takes, takes, getting a bit of counterattack on the king. Throws in a check. At e7 with the pawn is maybe a bit stronger, or at f6 was uh, supposed to be more solid. But uh, knight came back, and um, knight takes bishop, takes, takes, takes. And this did not prove to be at b2. Black doesn't have quite the material to attack that white king. Um, at b7 came. Very good move at b7. You've got a knight on a6. It, it cuts off the rook and then the pawn cuts off the other two squares. So you're getting in on the back ranks. It's a very strong move. The other move the engine suggests is at d7. And the idea is you can't just take it. <clears throat> because knight a to c5, king, if your king goes here, you've got a pawn, um, a pawn check, king here, and you don't actually take the rook. I think the strongest move, although you could take the rook, is going here first, then letting him go here, and then coming in with the other knight. And when he goes here, then landing your next diagonal piece with checkmate. And of course, if he goes here directly, then we can do that kind of pattern directly. Pawn here, takes, here, here, and checkmate. So notice how the knight covers the dark squares and then the other one covers the light squares. It's a very nice pattern. So at d7 was also a strong move, but at b7, brilliant move played as well. Takes the free piece. But he's going to regret it. Um, bishop here, check. So it just grabs that knight. King goes back to b1. Black only has diagonals, so no threat. Knight here, check. Knight e to c5, check. And rook here, check. And the king is being flushed out and is going to get mated soon. So anything here is blocked, you take it. If the king goes to h5, you push g4, checkmate. So black resigned. Okay, so now let's go to game four. As I said, this is 20 games between Jasugi99 and Katask in Crazy House 960. Um, they are 1 plus 0 games, but I still think they're worthy of analysis to see the intuition of the best players at work. D4, so this is the same position as game three with um, Bishop on this long diagonal. Um, but instead of going for opening up the Bishop as black, as Katas did as black, he's going for e4, so he's copying the same move that 12 team did as white. Um, so 12 team goes for a sneak attack and pulls it off, it's bullet, and Katas didn't notice, and then he goes all the way back again. Not even daring to go to, to f7, because of course then the queen could be hit with tempo. g4. So Katask is like, take one pawn, well, I'm just going to get some activity while you waste time taking my pawns. Queen g3, b6, opening up the bishop, 
knight e5. So it's a big threat here at f7. Okay, he takes the queen out. Bishop h3 hitting the queen again. So this is a little bit, a little bit uncomfortable for black, despite being a pawn up. His queen is being hit. And of course, this is a bit of a mistake because knight f7 comes. Um, what could he have done in this position? At g4 actually works. Um, if knight takes g4, there is... Oh, bishop takes rook, so yeah. How long has that rook been hanging? I guess the rook was unimportant when f7 was a threat. Just the queen was hit again, so you can't take a rook. Um, so yeah, at, at g4 was strong in this position because then there's a double threat on the bishop and on the rook. Um, I guess all that black, white could do here is this, but then you can just take it this, uh, and then you can just take it. Um, and now if you take the queen, as uh, black can indeed take the rook, unless he has something better in store. I'm thinking why not take the rook, but maybe there's some good reason not to. If you did just take the rook, Knight f7, king e8, knight takes h8, maybe not so nice. So, um, hmm, rather uncomfortable. Maybe bit bishop here first, although what's the threat? The knight is not threatened, because knight at f7 comes. So, yeah, still not completely clear. Like, white could just move the rook out of the way, for example. Um, but I guess the material is equal, so it's all good. So at g4 was okay, but this was unfortunate. And Katas capitalizes. He wins the queen with check, and uh, I imagine this game is not going to go on too much longer. Swaps off um, diagonals. Just be going for some pieces to launch a counterattack. Blocks on d8. Okay, this is looking rather hairy. Takes here. Gets in another check. So the point problem is you can't just take that because you can promote under promote with check again. Simply goes back, takes takes, runs away that way. So twelve team gets a lot of checks in, but uh, he just doesn't have the pieces to back up back it up. Maybe the one the one trick along the way. He certainly couldn't go king a one here. That would be that would be a suicide. But. Uh, most moves were completely fine, and Katask won that game. So now to game five, and again, a central rook, it's often a good idea to push the pawn in Crazy House 960. Um, so, if people can let me know in chat, how's the sound? How, how are you finding the these games? Is everything, is everything going smoothly? So... Okay, so here the knight is is not so nicely positioned. So you can see how the knights are going to... Uh, Katas chooses to get the knight out early. Um, the bishops are actually fine. Uh, the queen should develop fine. You can expect some kind of pawn here, for example, to develop the bishop and the queen fast. So Katas goes for developing the knight quickly, and 12 team goes for a big center. C6, D5, and then the center is challenged, opening up the diagonal. E5, blocking off the diagonal. F6, challenging the, the blocking off the diagonal. Opening it up again. E takes F6, takes, takes, and then just mirroring mirroring the position. And here black played bishop to F4. Um, this turned out to be a mistake, because this bishop is a, a key defender of the black king. So even the best move in this position might be something like bishop to C7. Just developing that bishop, but not trying to trade it, not not taking it out where it could be traded. Because bishop f4, bishop d2, the bishops end up getting traded. Um, he, and black continues to develop, but now his dark squares are a little weak. So at e7 might be a threat, for example. Knight e6 at f4, yeah, that falls to this fork. f5, rook e8, f takes g6, so he picks up a knight. And that's kind of annoying because a knight could land here. 
castling doesn't really help you in that respect. Um, although knight for a rook is just the same. Interesting move here, but is actually just not even taking back this pawn. A rather interesting move is going h6, knight to d6. And so what's the idea? It's a rather curious idea, but it's the idea that h6 does block up that bishop, whereas if you take back, um, if you if you take back, you're giving the bishop life. Bishop takes g6 with ideas on h7 and f7. It's a rather unusual idea, because if white ever does get pawns, he's going to go on h7 anyway. Um, so maybe it's short-termism, short -termism, but... But black also didn't take back, it just went for castles immediately. But this is not much good because g takes h7, black just sacked his queen, check, and uh, black resigned. And I guess the story of this game was losing this dark squared bishop was really important for black's position. So now we're going to see a repeat of this, but with, oh, with 12 teen as white again? No, I think, I think it wasn't a repeat. They had to restart. And then we have a different position with the bishops in the center. But 12 teen is white for two in a row. And that's a nice move. Facing off that queen with the bishop while he doesn't have any blockers. Uh, Katas just goes for sacking the queen for activity. Bishop c6, bishop d2. Interesting. Bishop d2, so he's going to have double pawns if he wants if he wants to have double pawns on white's position. Knight e1, just getting that knight out of the way, but also protecting g2. Knight b to d7. Creating that buttress against the long diagonal e5, knight e2, just trying to reinforce. So white, white seems to be maybe struggling a little, sort of stepping back to try and reinforce. c4. So, I mean, the reason I say struggling a little, you know, plus 1.4 despite being a queen up for a piece. Seems, uh, so if, if black finds the right moves, maybe really pressuring these light squares, then it, maybe it's difficult, I'm not sure. Um, maybe not. I'm, I'm sure maybe, e, I'd say e4 might be the ch most challenging move in this position. So white's still got an edge, but it's challenging. Uh, so the idea being if you take, which you probably don't want to do, uh, black takes back and has lots of dangerous ideas. And takes bishop, maybe even sacking on g2 and so on. Okay. But black played bishop e7, maybe a little bit passive, maybe. c4, seems good. Um, takes, knight takes. Those bishops are a bit of a menace, so I imagine he's going to take one of them. Bishop backed off. b5, trying to control, trying to control the queen side. h3, it's a nice attack. c6, takes, knight takes, no, he does king takes. Because he doesn't want, if knight takes, I guess he's afraid of getting pinned and stuff. Oh, yeah, let's have a look. Is it the pin or at h3 that's stronger? Apparently at h3, because it's more forcing. So like knight f4, knight takes f3. It's picking up a pawn for g2. So yeah. So king takes to avoid all that. And... Black's got three pieces pointing at c6, and he breaks through. Takes, takes, takes. Bishop backs off to b7, rook to g1. Pawn here. King is going to be very safe back on h1, defended by the rook. Rook and knight defending g2. Just needs one more extra move to get back to, to h1. And why h1 and not f1? So you could, in theory, go to either. But in general, h1 is safer because the white king can only be attacked from one direction on h1. Having said that, it can also be smothered more easily by a smothered mate. But there are fewer directions to attack a king on h1. King on f1 is more in the center, so it's more easy to, to draw it out. So black played uh, e6, 
d takes e6, f takes e6, he went to f1 in fact, so contrary to what I said, g4 takes, puts pawn in f3, knight c3, knight e4, knight takes f3, knight takes f3 maybe wasn't so good, so what was better? What was better was exchanging knights and dumping a pawn on h6, maybe, was better. And the threat is just jump, dump a second pawn on g7 if that were taken. So so yeah, the knight is a, a great attacking piece. So instead he, he grabs the pawn on on f3, which seems really good, but uh, ooh, he loses that knight. That's a problem. Yeah, that's a miscalculation, that that knight just falls. Uh, knight takes e3, queen takes, he loses a whole piece, queen at f2, pinning it, but it's easy to defend e4, again attacking the defender with the bishop, knight f4, blocking off both of white's open files, so a really good move. Okay, queen for two pieces, but uh, white's fairly happy with that. Queen at d3, trade of um, queens, I mean, I mean black is reasonably happy with it. Is black happy? So apparently the trade of queens is actually a blunder. So black was happy, just had to just get the king out of the way and, and oh, not, maybe even not castles, just go king g8, it says. And, um, and then black is happiest of all. So maybe the trade of queens is not so good for black. That's, that's what it seems. Takes, takes, queen f3, and he's losing a knight potentially. So he, he puts on the queen, because uh, now you can't take the knight, because the, the queen is pinned. So it blocks. The knight takes the rook, takes back, and now the rook is causing trouble in the back rank. So black asking some annoying questions. Takes, takes, knight e2, hitting the queen, takes, 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 and the king is... So where did it go wrong? It's a difficult position for white. Okay, so he's getting attacked a lot, and he's with that he's losing the queen. Although he's winning a queen back, it's it's black to play. Black's got initiative, and black will get the mate if he does the obvious thing. Um, something like bishop takes f2 is especially strong. If you try and do this, there's a very pretty mate here. With rook takes h2, if you step up, queen here check, king here, queen takes rook checkmate. And if you take the rook, then bishop takes rook check, and uh, with the rook, no, just take the queen, it's much simpler. If you, if you don't take the, yeah, if you, take, if you go king takes bishop, then lots of things will mate, basically, but king takes bishop, Oh, you got a whole new queen on on hand, so you you have to take the queen, but then this mates. So so this position, bishop takes f two is very strong and mating. Queen takes queen is played is, is also. Uh, oh, he took the knight. Okay. Took the knight, and lost his queen. Well, that's awkward. Check, and I guess it's a flagging race at this point. And suddenly white's doing kind of okay. Um, or white was doing kind of okay uh, if he hadn't given away a knight. I mean, the knight is the one piece that really kills white in this position. If he does pawn at e6, for example, threatening f7, white is completely crushing. But with knight d 6 he gives away a knight. Knight's a crucial piece, and that's going to hurt. Um... He does this. Um, having said that, he did rook at f4 here. Uh, the really beautiful move in this position was rook takes pawn, and of course you have to take it, because if you just do this, then it's this, this, and this checkmate. So you have to take that rook, but then you go rook here check, and you force the king. If the king goes here, you go rook takes queen with check. If the king goes... Um, what to g3, it's bishop takes queen with check, you're winning the queen with check, and uh, the game is over. What actually happened in the game, interestingly, is he did the rook f4 check first, 
which is actually the wrong move order. If if 12 teen had found the move king g3, quite a hard move to find. Uh, but then there's nothing, because after stuff like bishop h4 check or bishop takes f2, you take the rook. Uh, if ever rook takes pawn or something, you just take, take this. And, um, oh, that's even with check. So after you take back, this is landing with checkmate. So you're not you're not keeping check. Um, but what actually happened in the game is 12 teen stepped to e2. He got he got it with check, and uh, and so then it was mate. As I said, these games, both players have like fractions of a second left, just playing instantly, throwing throwing the pieces around at the end of the game. So it's no not. I mean, what's amazing is actually is the quality of the play, despite the fact that they're playing at such a blistering pace. Okay, uh, game seven. So we have the same position now as game six with these bishops in the center. Um, Katask opens up his queen. c5. Seems reasonable. The, the rook pawn is always a good pawn to push. Developing the bishops develops the queen. Now this is very interesting from Katask. He goes for a pawn sacrifice for activity. You wouldn't normally want a knight in your half of the board, but uh, I guess, yeah, he wants to have a look at this diagonal. And 12 teen once says, no, 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 no. So he sacks his knight, and uh, we see this lovely pawn chain that uh, 12 teen has created. And Katas is quite keen on removing it. He's attempting to do this, but. Um, fact, this is, is even an idea. The point being, if you take with a pawn, you have bishop here check, winning a whole queen. Um, and if you take with a king, you have a very silly looking king by the looks of things. Maybe you still have bishop d4. Um, and OK, it's not check, but you're hitting the queen and the rook. Um, and it's looking, and maybe you have some mating ideas against the king as well. So apparently stuff like this is like, just give up the queen. The king is more important. Um, so rather uncomfortable if you take it. And Katas just stepped back. So quite smart. Bishop h3. So this is a classic sort of setup where you attack on one color complex and your work is done and then you attack on a second color complex. King to e1. It's just trying to pick up more pieces. Queen e5. Knight c6. Hitting the queen. Interestingly, this, the problem is he's losing this pawn. Maybe what he could have done is this, this, and this to again just maintain control on this e3 square. But uh, instead black went like so. Queen takes e3, knight to d4, knight c3, knight to f5. This is the way he's trying to maintain control of the e3 square. Queen f4, bishop to c7, e5, bishop takes knight, and bishop takes knight Maybe it was not the best move. Um, so why is that? So just to show, queen takes knight apparently is even an idea. And then hitting the queen. So the reason why bishop takes knight isn't as strong is it's really important to keep defense of this knight. So even queen takes knight is good. And hitting the queen, and then you get a, quite a big attack going. You, you're attacking the queen. Next, you're going to take a pawn and threatening at f2. Um, but maybe even better move than queen takes f3 is is the move f6. Now, although that's a pawn near your king, you can't take that pawn because of the pin on the queen. Um, and um, your bishop really does protect you, so you're not too worried, actually, about your king. Uh, so you might be, say, f2, for example. Bishop takes pawn, knight takes pawn, pawn takes knight, queen takes pawn, and the back pawn at f6, queen e4. Black is actually quite solid here, rather surprisingly. But okay, instead he played bishop takes f3, and the problem with that is the queen should just take on f5. Um, and the reason why that's so nasty is because it's threatening stuff like knight at g6, check, followed by knight at e7. Um, 
so ideas like that are in the air. But instead he took back on f3, which is actually good for black. Knight d4, bishop attacking the queen, queen to b8, and um, I might have a puzzle coming up, so just in case I do. Um, so he attacks the queen and he takes the knight, and... And instead of taking out the bishop, because there's no point, this is a good knight, white exchange for the bishop. Black played, bishop takes e5. And in this position, okay, I need to make sure that chat is alive. White has an excellent move, and Katas found the move. So can someone in chat tell me, what should white play in this position? So let's see who's in chat. Not so many people. Who am I streaming up against that not so many people are watching? Um, St. Louis Chess Club, Cairns Cup. Hmm, okay. Well, if anyone does see what the move is for white here, then then do shout it out. It, it is just one move. is It's really decisive in this position. So just to see where, how we got here. Um, so we took the knight, we defend our own knight, which we saw was such an important piece. Queen here, bishop takes knight, bishop takes pawn. So this, this maneuver from 12 team of queen v8, bishop takes pawn would be really strong were it not for Katask's wonderful move in this position. So, any ideas? Okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go straight ahead because um, it seems it's 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 a quiet night tonight. It's the move is knight at h7. Okay, um, and what happened in the game is black played king to g8 and got mated. Next move. Oops. So, wonderful find from Katask. Uh, what 12 team needed to play was, of course, rook takes knight, bishop takes rook, but this is still pretty nasty. Rook at g8 is the threat. You'd have to do... what do you have to do? Um, so grabbing pawns is not going to help you. Grabbing a queen is not going to help you. Grabbing pawns, even with check, is not going to help you defend g8. Um, any checks you have are going to run out. You could go knight takes f3, bishop takes knight check, all kinds of checks you have. This is not a mating attack. Anything like knight at h6 or knight at f6 is really no good. The queen will just take it. Maybe the only defense I can see is just putting a knight uh, on g8. And that doesn't work, because that's a smothered knight. <laughs> so it's a disaster all around. Um, OK, so a really nice win from Katask. Uh, beautiful checkmate. Okay, going on to game eight. So we have d4. So again, notice about this position, the knight is a bit awkward, and the king and the queen are a bit separated. So the king is not so safe. The knight will move out, and this square will be a little bit sensitive in this position. So let's see how it played out. Again, Katask is quick to develop his knights first, whereas I think 12 team goes for maybe slightly goes for the bishops, maybe um, goes for the center. And then, well, Katask goes to the center also. Um, develops his rook, h4. And so already there's a dangerous idea in the air. Bishop takes h2. So probably better to leave that knight where it is. There's no need to move it. Takes f6. And this is annoying. So you have to take with the g-pawn. Knight h5. Oh, so he does move it, but it's because he has it. He has he has something on his mind. Um it was a mistake to move it, actually. 
Stockfish would say. Net better would have been to go new knight at h5. Um, so I'll put a little exclamation mark there. Knight h5, which takes h2, king f1, and then he blocks, simply blocks that file, blocks the rook file. But um, then knight at h6 would be an idea, and a pawn at g7. Quite hard to say what you do in this situation if you do a knight at h6. And I should remove, um, I, I didn't mean to keep this, this little puzzle, box, puzzle cover in place. So I'll remove that. Okay. So hopefully the screen is still visible. Yes. Um, okay, so knight h6 is interesting. What does black do in this position? Um, he probably goes straight for, the, for an attack of some kind, um, but maybe this is tough. Um, what 12 team yeah h3 maybe you take it takes back pawn here if necessary you have to evacuate um but if you can avoid evacuating we do it's not clear knight f4 knight f4 don't really want to trade so much it's a double check as well so you take here um, then there's knight e2, another discovered check. So really nasty stuff at, g, at bishop g3, knight to f3 here. So black's got quite a huge attack. Knight takes rook, king f1, knight takes g3 check, king takes e1, rook at f1, king d2, rook takes f2, blocks. Okay, so it's not, not necessarily mate immediately, but with the, the reveal check and the second reveal check, it's some pretty lethal stuff. Um, so, yeah, so going directly for an attack, h3 is interesting, actually. But instead, e5, and instead of going knight h6, bishop h6. Um, bishop h6, then h3, and, and we're, we're, in, we're into the game. Knight at g7, the king just ran away. So all my, all um, white three minor pieces are just out of reach of the king. So black suddenly has quite a big advantage. What should he have done instead? It's hard to say. So he takes here and his king is now rather exposed. Knight h4, just takes. He always had this rather nasty idea. But black is still winning, so he takes the bishop. He could, white should have just gone at g2 directly, but this is also maybe strong. Well, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Bishop takes, or bishop takes, it might take away coverage. So maybe knight takes was stronger. Bishop takes, knight at d2 check, king comes out this way. Yeah, so this is the problem with, this is the problem with bishop takes. The bishop was guarding this square in particular. Um, so knight takes was strong. If I just go that, that's a good move. Bishop takes is a problem because then this square becomes weak, he loses the queen, and uh, black black is safe and is get and is mating. And this is what happened in the game. Check, check. Really chill move from black, uh, just just developing his queen, just going to, wanting to go here and deliver checkmate. Ooh, but the bishop's covering that one. Um, in fact, it's too chill. Um, because white now has, has actually some initiative. Bishop a5 at b6, rook takes a8, queen takes a8, and instead of knight at a6, the key move here is just taking the queen. 
and white is actually safe. This square's defended. The rook check is defended. Just grab the queen. What actually happened in the game though was takes takes and knight a6, king b7, and it's a bit dangerous losing that knight as we'll see. Um, knight here check, he takes the knight, rook here check, king here, he took the queen but now the knight is going to mate him. Well it should have mated him. Knight at c2, takes, takes, and the bishop is removed. The knight cuts off the bishop's protection of this square. So takes, 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 and here's checkmate. Although what actually happened in the game was this first, this check, then takes, then the knight check, then the rook check, and a very beautiful smother. So a slightly different sequence, which is also rather pretty. Knight at b5, rook at a3, takes, and smothered mate. Very easy better. Um, and probably the way to avoid that was to go king a4. And then things are a bit more complex. Black wants a pawn to mate, so knight takes d4 is strong. And it's just impossible to stop this. And black, black is not getting mated himself, so black is going to win. Okay, game nine. So we have a d4, d5. The knights, the awkward knights in the corners are developed. Takes, takes, knight d7, develops, pawn here, knight d5, attacks the queen. <coughs> that knight has to be taken because it has an onward threat. Taking it with the bishop would be logical for onward development, but takes it instead to the queen. And the queen is hit with tempo, and Katask gives up the queen, <coughs> which actually gives it up for two pieces, so that's perfectly logical. Queen h4, quite a, a nasty move because you're hitting h2, knight d3, so you could take on h2, but instead did c at c4, knight f3 hitting the queen, and now you've lost your chance to take on h2. I guess that sort of would have happened if you had taken on h2. <clears throat> so he gives back the queen for two pieces. Bishop at b1. And I want to just cover this up in case this is an interesting puzzle. Knight at a3. And it's black to play in this position. And 12-team uh, did indeed find the, the move in this position. Despite this being bullet, he found the move. Uh, anyone in, in chat see it? Just going to give 10 seconds. Back to play. Okay, so I'll reveal. The move is promote, takes, and then get a nasty fork on that queen. So that's what happened in the game. Takes the queen, king takes. Okay, small mercies, you're not mated immediately. Um, bishop came out. Wasn't there something stronger? That's what you're wondering. Queen at g4, maybe. Okay, so bishop came out, but... Not quite sure where it's going. Um, good move from Katas, just developing, hitting the bishop. Rook to e1. Okay, so he's lost his queen, but he's he's um... Hi there, Smash Time Fools. Greetings, greetings. Um develops okay, and Katask. Well, it looks like Katas has been doing some, has been quite productive, but apparently at d7 was the stronger move. 
idea being if this, then this. Well, that was yeah, that's a that was a hard one to see. And if you do anything else, you're winning. You're winning a piece. Yeah, if you go here. So that was the move. Um, queen takes c8. That was a kind of wow. That was that was that was a really nice move that I completely didn't see earlier. Um, okay, instead he backs off and he's he's working away on the dark squares. It looks quite promising. But um, it's it, white having come back into the game. It's now black's turn to get back into the game, and black eventually does find that move queen g4, just hitting two minor pieces at once, um, and he's going to take one of them. Turns out with check, knight d2, knight d3 check. He's taking another minor piece. Uh, d7. What's the idea of d7? Just desperation. Um, King takes d7, there are no interesting discoveries, and white resigned. So now this is game 10 out of 20. Gosh, this is quite a long series. Um, so maybe I'll try and go a little bit quicker. But e4 again, try and develop the bad knight in 960 seems logical. And and 12 team, just opening up the bishops. As I said, this is a bullet series, but I feel like just the, the natural intuition means these players actually play um, very instructive moves, even if they're not necessarily the best moves. I think they're very instructive. Bishop c2, a5. Um, again, just going for a4, a3. It's logical because a3 is already um, attacked by the queen. Uh, casting queenside is not logical at all because it's putting the king in harm's way. And uh, Katask pursues a4. <clears throat> and a3 is almost forced here. So white is in a rather uncomfortable position, having created some light square weaknesses around his king. And Katask immediately settles a piece into the light square weaknesses. And is, is already pressing forwards on, on white. So you can see how, how everything is just pressing down on, on white's position. And that's the problem with having weaknesses. The pieces settle into the weaknesses, and you find you're pushed back. Um, and here Katask went ballistic with queen takes a3. Um, it turns out a, a slower approach was more valuable, so rook c to b6 for example. If knight c4, defending b2, because obviously these rooks are indirectly targeting b2. You simply takes, takes, uh, check, takes, and then takes on here, king to c1, king is trying to run away, and the really brilliant move here for black is just is this a2 move. You're threatening this, leading to almost checkmate, and you're threatening getting a queen. Really strong move. If you try and stop the latter, he gets a queen, takes, takes, you bring the other queen in, takes, 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 and uh, checkmate. So rook c to b6, so a kind of slower approach was really valuable here. Okay, Contask went for something quite interesting, queen takes a3. But uh, as we'll see, it's actually a forced draw. So it's not a winning line, as he might have hoped. Because b takes a3, knight takes d2, double check, king c1, takes queen. But now remember, white also, he had to sack a queen to do that, and white also has a queen in hand. And what does he do with it? Check, takes, takes, check, takes, takes, check, takes, takes. So what's the issue? The issue is... Black can never run. He always has to block. If he ran, there's the rook is coming in. You could block. You can sack your rook. Bring the knight in. The moment the king is on D, ever on d7, your knight comes in. King to f7, and the queen comes in. You take, takes, and it's checkmate. Uh, if instead of blocking, you tried to run, again, you have the sack on g7, and the knight comes in. And this is the key thing, and it's the same pattern. The knight comes in, the queen comes in, and it's checkmate. If you try to run forward directly, again, the queen is coming in directly, and this is going to be checkmate. This is called a hook mate, where the knight supports a rook, and then the square is also covered. Uh, rook or queen. So, so the king can never run out, and we see it's a draw. Force draw, 
So white, despite being in a very precarious situation, it, um, is able to force the draw. That was the first draw of the 20 game series, but as we'll see, there's another one. Game 11. Not this one. Again, knight's in the corner, knight develops quickly. Um, you've got to be careful also if you take, if there's any drops on h2, but there aren't here because the bishop covers. So f3 is a good move to get this develop bishop developed. d5, e4. Again, pushing the pawn in front of the rook. We've seen this is a common theme. e5, knight to c3. So knights are quite well developed. Maybe the one piece that's slightly worrisome is this bishop here. d4. So in a way, uh, Katask has, has developed his, his bishops maybe slightly, slightly better in this particular game. But uh, this bishop has got ideas. f6 and bishop a2 indeed was played. But it's not a good idea because black should have just taken this bishop and then replaced it. And his position is stronger. He, he controls the diagonal. Um, but instead he blocked the diagonal and knight f5, g6. And so white I think is slightly getting back into this. Knight to d5, um, now hang on a second, game, I've done something slightly confusing because game 11, I should really be viewing it from black's perspective, just to, um, because all the other games I've done from the perspective of 12 team, so that's a slight error. So. So just to begin again, it's 12 team as black here with the, the nicely developed bishops. Um, okay, so quite creative move here, knight d5. What else? Yes, this is the really interesting move in this position. This pawn is so important for black that white should just take it. Takes, even lose this piece, and just go back again. Um, or if you did take here, uh, bishop takes knight, comes, bishop takes bishop, and knight takes d4, because that knight was the defender. Bishop takes knight, bishop takes bishop, knight takes e4. And so white clears away a lot of the pieces in his half of the board, and, and uh, posi the position he sorts out a lot of problems. So bishop takes e4 is a very interesting move, and probably the best move is takes the knight, and then just backs off the bishop. So a just a piece for a pawn, but it's a really important pawn. Now black has no pawns to continue. And as we see, he, he ended up sucking a piece for a pawn there anyway. So knight d5, takes the piece, takes back, knight to c5, and he took, takes, takes, except he's still, there's still now a pawn on d4, e7, so it's, while the knight is under attack, he's just trying to get some use of it before it has to, before it dies, queen to c4, attacking this knight, bishop takes d5, queen takes c5, F4. So what happened here? Because black was doing quite nicely, and um, turns out this is a mistake. Bishop f4, just playing knight d7, hitting the queen, queen takes d4, bishop c5, black is very solid. He's going to take this whenever he wants to. He went bishop f4, going for an attack. Ah, and he drops a whole piece, that's the problem. Katas just wins a whole piece because you can't take back. Bishop takes d2, sure, um, but you can't afford to take this rook because the squares around your king are too weak. Um, in fact, even with knight at d7, trying to secure stuff up, white still found mate here with knight at d7, king here. Drop a pawn, so we're taking the rook with check, takes back, and bishop at d6. And at this point, black resigned because he saw the writing on the wall. What was the writing on the wall? It was rook at d8 check, 
takes, takes, king takes, and back rank mate. During the series I was thinking rook at c7 instead, king to b8, and that can be turned into a mating sequence with rook takes b7, the point being if, if king takes b7, queen takes pawn is checkmate, and if you go this way then queen takes pawn and block and queen takes c7 is still checkmate. So rook at c7 also works, but uh, rook at d8 is much, much, much prettier. So there we go. So game 12, um, 12 team was white, and the knights are on the queen side, the bishops on the king side, and again, the 12 team developing his bishops and Katas developing his knights. We've seen this as a pattern developing in this series. Katas going for developing the knights first, but then very quickly trying to take the center. c4, simply hanging, queen takes Queen takes e4, but this is this is bullet after all. Um, bishop to g7. Um, actually, even stronger, ironically, than taking the pawn is this move here, threatening knight takes b2. Um, and you can actually defend both at once with the, the very beautiful move castles queenside. Uh, but then there's bishop h6 check, and you don't have any blockers. Uh, so you either go king c2, or you put the bishop in the way, but then you takes takes, and your your rook is pinned to your here. Well, there's also this knight takes d4. Wow, I mean this pawn is so weak. So and everything is bad here basically. Um, so in fact, the best move here is just to go king c2. But this whole thing is a disaster, a complete disaster. Um, yeah, so this pawn now is defended because bishop and rook defend it. The problem with going bishop d3 is is you're, you're actually pinning your own bishop and so then this pawn becomes weak. Or even rook d3, same problem. Just knight takes d4. So, bishop g7. So bishop g7 was played. Oh, this e, d4 pawn is still going to be a problem, whatever you do. Uh, so he plays knight b3, and Katask finally takes that pawn. And 12 team just goes for the for the cheapo, knight c5, and Katask castles. e5, trying to block off this, this strong diagonal. Uh, so this, this position is just a complete wreck for 12 team. Um, the knight backs off, f4, but, and yet somehow he builds up a barrier against that long diagonal. How does he do it? Um, why didn't black just take? He was probably afraid of something. Not quite sure what. That would seem to be a, a clear thing to do, but um, maybe there was something. Maybe just maybe he's afraid of this, this, some kind of tempo move on the. Yeah, I can't see anything. Looks like a complete disaster. But um, black backs off, and white just gets in at least uh, a little bit of consolidation. d6, immediately hitting that center. Okay, sacks. Um, even king takes knight is good because the knight is the knight has planned, so you have to take it. Uh, this check doesn't work because you you take the rook, rook takes check, pawn blocks, he takes f4. I mean black is still doing well, but rook a check, knight e7, and this is again very nice defensive move. This knight is looking a bit threatening, maybe threatening a pawn in c7 at some point. Just remove it as quickly as possible. Again. White's position is just a wreck here. Knight here, check. King to d1. And I'm just going to lock off the analysis board for a second. White's position is a wreck, and yet there are no obvious checks. So what should black play in this position?
Any ideas? I've got no idea. I'm thinking C2. I'm thinking F2, slightly weak. That is a really obvious move. And so I'll reveal, oh no. Move the wrong box. Okay, so the move is rook takes pawn. Why is this such a strong move? Because even if you win this this knight, b takes c6, we have knight takes pawn, that dangerous pawn attacking our king. We take it back with check, so with tempo. And if you block, very nice move at c3. Yeah, hi there, YQ. Well, thanks at least for trying. Yeah, thanks for trying. It was, it's tough. But it's just open up the center is the answer. Open up the center. Just, um, what was played was, yeah, what was played was at, at f2, which is tempting. But rook takes d5 is incredibly strong. Rook takes d5. You're opening up the center, and if you take the knight, again, discover, check. Even though the rook can take this knight at some point, you can't, because there's no time. You're in check. And now you just keep on hitting. c3, you stop, rook takes knight, and you're, you've got eyes on, on d2. And this is actually really well defended. So even though you're attacking it se several times, um, in fact, if I just turn the engine on, if you, just, if you take with the pawn, you're actually opening up pawn at b2 potential ideas, or pawn at e3 ideas. But why not go pawn at e3 directly, actually? That's, a, that's an interesting question. So why is pawn at c3 more powerful? If pawn takes pawn, hmm... So, okay, I'll tell you why. So the first thing is, you've blocked off this rook file on your king. That is a result. While your rook is open on the white king, the white rook is no longer open on the black king. Result. Whereas if he doesn't take with the pawn, if he takes with the knight, and Sleipner says, I wouldn't have found that in a game. No, indeed, it's, it's quite subtle. Takes with the knight, we just take back, and if he takes with the rook, we can actually just take that rook. And if he takes back, we've now got four pawns, a knight, and a rook. And actually, this is just this is just lethal. So we end up with this sort of position. Um, I think I got it by a slightly different order in my notes. So it's, um, after pawn here, bishop here, check, blocks, then takes back, takes, 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 takes. Um, you just take all, and uh, that white king is actually a bit exposed, and probably getting mated with accurate play. Bishop e3 check is very accurate, it turns out. Rook takes e3 turns out to be forced, or you get mated. Uh, and then the very strong move is rook at c2, drawing the king up, and then rook at d2. The king can't come down. If the king goes down, you have a, a knight here check and a pawn here checkmate. If you go to an, a dark square, it's the same pattern. So the king has to go up, but then there's bishop there check just revealing, sorry, f6 revealing the bishop, which you can block. Takes, takes, but then you use your knight to check him and win the bishop. I mean, there's no avoiding this. Um, and use your second knight and use pawns and finish him off. There's no avoiding it, as in if you try and go to a4, you still use a knight and pawns and pawns, and you win the bishop with check, and you mate him. So it stops the rook attack, exactly. That's the beauty of this, yes. So you're opening up your file while simultaneously blocking off a really dangerous attack because this is not just winning a piece, it's winning a piece with check. So this is very, very, very pretty, actually. 
this uh, rook takes pawn, and the point is anything here, rook takes knight, pawn takes knight, you're going to take it back with check yourself. Yeah, this, I mean, this is just, this is like super, I mean, like, it's so picturesque, the fact that you're just, you're just opening up this file on your king while simultaneously closing down the file on, on your opponent's king. I mean, that, that's just amazing. Um, so, yeah. Um, just, and you can just take all, and this is actually mating with accurate play. Quite hard to find it, again, in practice in a game, but with accurate play, this is mating. Um, notice, oh, you even got two pawn spares, so it's not that tight. Now, what actually happened in the game was at f2, which again, it looks reasonable, but it's not good enough. Um, rook takes e7 was played, very strong move because it's threatening at b7 checkmate. Rook d7, and here, a really, really pretty move from 12 teen. Rook e8 check. Black has no blockers. So if he had played on, he would either have to move the king or move the rook back. If he moves the rook back, then just rook takes knight, for example. King takes, rook takes rook. Uh, you don't really want to take it, because, well, you, if you can, but if you take it, um, just rook here, check, king here, and the other rook comes in with checkmate, I think is the best way of doing it. Um, and if you just step up, well, let's try stepping up to here, for example. Then there's rook takes pawn check. Oof. Pawn here. Um, what now? So nothing... So... Yeah, I can't see anything forcing, but apparently rook takes knight is, is pretty good, but... Um, knight takes, then take here, king takes, b takes, c6. Uh, if you take, 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 we're getting a lot of pieces. Um, so what else do we have to do? If we just go here, then that really doesn't work. Just there is checkmate. Um, and if we go here, again, this is just, this is just going to be mate. So I guess we do have to take, after all, um, Oh, there's something stronger than just taking back, which is interesting. Bishop at c8, king to a7, knight at b5 check, king here, bishop takes rook, discovered check, blocks, knight here, rook here, bishop takes knight. I mean, you just this is just <laughs> this is just cruel. Um, and black has no blockers. Okay, so the point is, the exact mating sequence isn't important. It it is it is a even if you didn't find mate, notice how. Black only has pawns, and the pawn checks are both covered, so totally sorted. Um, really nice move, though, from Kata, uh, from 12 teen finding rook e8, no blockers, and black resigned. He only has pawns in hand, and the, the mating attack is coming hard and fast. Game 13 of 20. So, again, so it's like the, like the previous game. With the knights against bishops, we're going to see how they play it differently. So we saw that the 12 team game, he developed his bishops and Katas developed his knights. Well, what is... Um, and again, we're saying 12 team going for the bishops, the Katas, going for this strong diagonal. You believe in that diagonal? And yeah, 12 team loves to just shut down, shut down the play and create his own play. So I think it's quite well played by both. Oops. Just look, dropped a pawn there, but it's intentional. So it's so a bit of a pawn sack, or exchange of pawns maybe. Takes, takes. He develops his knight, and black castles. Um, knight d4, takes. So actually that previous game, it looked like white's position was a wreck. Um, but all the lines were opened for him and he was the one who was able to take advantage. And that, that's what, something amazing about 12 team. He, he is really excellent at taking advantage of open lines, and Katas just didn't find that one key move, rook takes pawn, which would have opened the lines for him. 
the important lines for him. So that was quite interesting. So I think this is a real blunder of this game. Um, and also just to say, it's better to go knight to d7. Surely the knight in the center is better than the knight on a6. But uh, castles, g5, knight takes d5. So I think he goes for this knight sec. Okay, and I think I ex can explain why he did it. The reason he did it is because he thought he could take here. And then he calculates further and realizes, having sacked his knight, black has knight at h3. King g2 is forced, and 12 team would then have bishop takes bishop check. Oops, and we're like, we're losing everything. I guess we have to block. But we're just losing everything. Rook takes e2. This is a disaster for white. So white played this move. Katas played knight takes e5 in missing. Come on, this is bullet. It's very understandable. Missing the fact that that knight was just going, coming back to bite him. So this has just been an opening disaster for Katask. Um, and 12 team, it's, it's the ball is in 12 teams court to capitalize. Knight b4, so just coming in on here. Tries to block, block off the file. h5, so just throwing, throwing open the open lines. h takes g4, e takes f4, g takes f4. Just really trying to control squares around white's king. Um, actually, even stronger than uh, g takes f4, by the way, was the move at g3. Um, and the idea of this move is that if you take it, you have force mate as follows. Rook e2 check, king to g1, f2 check, king to f1. Then you trade queens and queen on the back rank. Um, and if after h, uh, g3 he just steps back, well, then you have e2. If you go here, then you're getting mated as follows. It's rather subtle. Rook here check, rook takes rook, knight takes c2, smothered mate. Um, so you can't go there. So you have to go the other way. But then you take this pawn with check, and if you dare step up, well, there are lots of things, but I think this is the most pretty. Pawn here, check. If you step back, we have that same idea, rook at d1, knight takes pawn check. And if you take it, you have mate in one, queen h4. Um, and that's what happens if you don't take that pawn. If you do take the pawn, then there's going to be a trade of queens, and we all know what happens when there's a trade of queens. The side that's being, that's being attacked is going to lose. If he takes, you simply have queen here, king here, and uh, well, everything mates, queen takes pawn or rook here, both mates. And if you step back, that's not going to help because queen h2 is mate straight away. Uh, slightly, nearly, this was a one minute time control, but the standard of play is astonishing. Um, they both built it out the moves so that they had basically loads of time <laughs> until, I mean, until like, okay, so when it, they had some long games, let's put it that way. Um, and this is 960, so they're not familiar with any openings, but they, they played at a real pace. And yes, it was very, very good to watch. Um, but OK, what actually happened in the game was went for a slightly slower approach, takes, 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 bishop here. Queen came in and white resigned. White resigned because he only has a knight um, in hand. If he if he just steps back, say king f1, it just doesn't work. Uh, here check king g1 at f2. So he has to block. If he blocks, you're taking, takes back. Uh, you can use that knight actually to create a lethal attack. Um, pawn here, pawn here, takes, queen takes, checkmate, something like this. Uh, as Slightmere says, to be expected from 12 team and Katask, indeed. Uh, so game 14. So e4, again, strong center from 12 team. b6, f3. And remember, this is their first time playing even on this website. 
Okay, they've played Crazy House 960 maybe once or twice before, ever, but rarely. So it's also a new game in a way for for everyone. D4, Bishop F7. So in that sense, we all we all can learn things. We're all going to learn things, but just the speed they played at, it's just impossible to play perfectly. Uh, and and yet, you learn a lot about like the intuition of like what what feels like a good move. Rather, so you can't expect all the calculations to be correct. Like we saw we saw pawns hanging because of pre moves in the opening and stuff like this. But you can kind of see the the feel of the moves is is really good. They both got a really um, knight d4, and so we learn ourselves like what 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 works, what doesn't work, and then also sometimes they make mistakes, and again that's to be expected. C5, knight to e2, knight e7, knight to g3, um, knight to six. So a little bit of a maneuvering game this one. Um, it almost feels like a normal chess game. Uh, c takes d4, takes, backs off, backs off all the way to c1. Um, I'm not sure about that, but it's rather blocking. Maybe a rook might want to go to c1 one day, but no, bishop c1 is fine. Knight h4, queen to b1. I think what's fun about this is he realizes his queen is out of play, and he's just going to very slowly bring it out. <laughs> like, it's more important to get my queen out, even if it takes two moves. Bishop b6, king to h1, getting out of any potential... Lines of fire. This is actually quite a, quite a, an attritional game, and this is a, this is actually it starts to get intense here. Takes here, takes here, takes here. This is all perfectly accurate. I mean, it's, I mean, not what I mean by perfectly. Accurate. It's all very sound player, to be honest. It looks quite sound, but rook c8. That's a mistake, because it falls for knight at e7. That's the first real real mistake. Otherwise, excellent play from both of them. Rook c8 fell for knight d7, 12 team found it, he takes the rook. And um, and actually there's something really interesting though about this position. The best move is not to take the rook. This is actually fascinating. So this is actually, so this is, uh, what we were witnessing was 2800 level play, and uh, this is 3500 level play. You don't take the rook at all, you go at h6. You want to take my queen? Sure, take my queen. Takes, takes. You have a knight waiting in the wings here. Knight to h5 check, king to h8, at g7. I think only a Jan Lee would spot a move like this. Okay, I, I exaggerate. I mean, of course, 12 team Katask would spot it on their day as well. But uh, that's the Jan Lee thing to say, ah, take my queen. I'm going to go for mate. I don't even want your rook. Um, so what would... what? Black does something like rook g8 to defend, takes, takes, maybe then you take the rook. And notice black can't even take back then. So it's, wow, how painful. Rook goes back to g8, and you take this pawn, and takes here. So this is just, this is called mopping up. Okay, what happened in the game is quite strong as well. Takes, takes, at h6 next. g6, step back, and notice with the pawn on g3, it means knight checks are not so powerful. Takes, takes. Oh, you've got to watch out though, because queen here will be a checkmate. So you have to be careful. But it turns out white's just got enough. Takes, takes, knight here, king back, rook here, check. Ooh. There was a slight error here. The thing to do here is bishop h6. It's a very beautiful pattern. Um, and the idea is, if king to g8, this is a really important mate. Rook h8, drawing the king to the corner. And then you drop pawn g7, pawn takes rook checkmate. This is a magnet mate. Really important pattern. Just sacrificing your bishop. If he doesn't take it, if you, you draw the king to the square where you can hit him on g7 and mate him. And if he does take it, then you can actually go knight f4 and stop him from ever coming back to g7 so he's stuck in the middle of the board. Uh, if he goes, if he goes here, you've got. Um, if he goes there, you've got pawn there check, and then rook there checkmate. And if he goes here, you have rook h h six check king here. It's the same sort of pattern. Pawn here checkmate. So that's a really beautiful one. 
And Slightly says, I mean, to be fair, Jan says, take my queen at the slightest provocation. Indeed. Uh, so bishop h6, that was a, a really nice move um, that was missed. Um, and white has to be a bit careful, but he's still winning. So, of course, king h8 would get mated. Um, also, of course, running the king up would get mated. Rook here, king here, pawn here. So black does the safest thing to do, which is rook at g7. And notice now that rook at h8 isn't quite so strong, because at g7 isn't supported by a bishop. It's still reasonable, but it's not quite so strong. In fact, Stockfish would say it's dubious. Rook g7, king h8. And 12 team just went for safety. Rook takes g3, suddenly all the threats are gone. Queen there check, just blocks. Pawn there, oh, okay, I'll take your queen. It's impossible both to protect the queen and to protect the mate threat. And the mate threat, by the way, is pawn at g7, king here, and then knight here, checkmate. Um, so, and there was no way of delivering that check with tempo protecting g7, so at g7 straight away, but then you just take the queen, potentially. Take the queen or at h6. Okay, so he just went for safety. Um, at g7, takes the queen, defends, and then starts attacking again. Um, and took the bishop, and at this point, black resigned. Just to give you an idea, if black does nothing, you're, you can, uh, a very nice move that white has is actually just a battery on this rook, and there's no way of defending it. Um, I th I'd say just, this is a really just uh, a, night, a very beautiful idea for how white could finish the game if black just did nothing. Uh, and the problem in this position for black is he has no pieces in hand, can't really do anything. Like, even if he wants to do something, it's pretty hard. Um, I mean, if he does something like knight takes pawn, well, you're losing your queen then. Um, so that's no good. Um, if you move that knight out the way, then queen takes rook, king takes. You now have a, a rook here, knight takes, rook takes, king h8, and then you can get a queen and go like, yeah, checkmate. Okay, so I mean, the, yeah, I mean, it's not... It's not completely clear, but um, it's just black has nothing to do. Hi there, little plotkin. So, so we're up to game 15. So I'm glad we're having people joining us now because I've tried offering puzzles earlier and we had very quiet, very quiet chat. So game 15, um, 12 team was black. E4, E5. Um, so he trades pawns. So what does he want the pawn for? He wants the pawn for well, nothing immediate. That seems worrisome. Um, yeah, so the problem with this is that pawn he traded is suddenly useful for white. Um, so you've got to watch out for this sort of thing in 960. Um, so that turned out not to be ideal, but white missed it, so he got the knight out of the way, and so he's back, back okay, I guess. But still, it seems like, yeah, uh, at d4, so okay, so that's what the pawn is useful for. So why couldn't, I'm just trying to think, what was, what was the pawn useful for? Takes, takes, we're taking the pawn, we want to use it for something. So black had a little bit of a, yeah, something's gone wrong with the development of white, in, uh, of black in this position. And it's just kind of hard to see exactly what. Um, yeah, maybe you have to go all the way back. Maybe, maybe f6, but it's hard to say. e6 gets the knight out. Okay, he gets the knight out here. And... And here, white finds the at d7, but now the rook, rook's got places to go. Actually, even better was rook e5. The problem with rook e7, as Katas showed, is then the, the rook can be hit. Uh, so you takes, and then this came. So this is really punishing uh, from Katas against 12-teen with this, this 
check against the king, king to e8, knight to, takes g7 check, king to f8. So this one's been a bit of an opening disaster for for 12 team. King to e8, knight to g7 check, king to f8. Now really, Katas should have pushed this for the win. Um, but he just settled for the draw. He just went up and down, settled for the draw, in, in actually what is a really uncomfortable position for for 12 team. Um, so what he missed was at e7 check. The idea being that if you take it, then do this, king here. Now what's the idea? Now the idea is we have, why couldn't that be done earlier? Oh, yes, this, yes, yes, this is really nice. Okay, I got it. e7, if you take with the bishop, then we're going to have a double attack on c7. So we're going to win the queen. And all, all your pieces are like on the back three ranks as well. I mean, not. I mean, if you you have to take this, you're losing a rook. Um, if you do this, if you do this, you're losing apparently. Um, I mean, this is crazy. You have this rook takes rook check. <laughs> Sorry, rook at the eight check here, ninety six check mate. You don't even go for the queen. Wow, I did not see that. Uh, and if you go the other way. Okay, if you go towards the queen, you just take the queen, and now oh, this is looking really dangerous. Um, so you can't take with the bishop, but if you take with um, the knight, then that's a really bad idea, because knight e6 check here, and knight f6 is checkmate. <laughs> so that's really funny. Um, so then the piece you have to take with then is the rook. But then there's bishop h6, and the king has got no squares to run to because the knight's cutting off this square. So you try and, I don't know what you're doing, you're just trying to give it maybe an extra square maybe in future if you can knock that knight out, but that wouldn't work because then this file will open. Um, so you have knight here check, king here. Oh, and incidentally that rook is no longer defending this square. So bingo, you're winning the queen anyway. Something like king to e7. And then you do take the queen. So really painful um, position for black. But Katask being Katask went for the draw and just went up and down. And uh, that was the second draw of the 20 game series. So wasted opportunity I said for white. But the attraction of a Crazy House 960 draw was too great. Okay, now the next game is game 16. And in a way is the most interesting because uh, Opa Wazen dropped by and offered some commentary on on this game. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna just play through the first few moves. F4, knight c6, and then just leave it on knight g6, knight c3, e5, f5, knight f4. So going for a fast attack. Um, g3 so he's, doesn't 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 back off. Does Katas Bishop G five, Bishop E three, F six, um, and it turns out this diagonal is really important, isn't it? So White takes the pawn, and um, as Opa says, this turns out to be a mistake, and he finds that remarkable. Um, the move that uh, the engine recommends is knight f2. The computer suggests that extra diagonals are good for black, so it wants to take the bishop later when it's safer. But it's still a surprise for me to see this as an experienced crazy house player. Uh, bishop f7 would come, for example, from here. And this is still an even position. So taking the knight apparently is a mistake, giving, giving that diagonal um, to black. Bishop takes, bishop takes and queen takes. So white should be material up, but uh, bishop at g5 causes trouble. Actually bishop at e5 causes even greater trouble. So I'm going to just, um, hmm, this isn't a puzzle yet, so let's see. 
But still, I'm gonna, hmm, so bishop of d5, why is this troublesome? Okay, why is this troublesome? I'm gonna be back in, in, 30, in 60 seconds. So, anyone, any idea why is this such a difficult position for white? Um, and also, why is bishop at e5 so much better than bishop at g5, which seems to point at the king more directly? Oh, I took out dangerous ideas. So, black has that pawn in hand. Um, Bishop at g5, as was played, is very natural. Let's just have a look at bishop at e5, though. Um, queen would back off, presumably. At a3. Hi there, smash. So why is this so dangerous for white? Now, surely he's got a bit of an attack. Takes. Queen takes. Well, why can't we just block? b2. Well, b takes c3. Well, surely this is dangerous, because if we take the queen, there's pawn here, king here, pawn takes rook, promotes to queen, checkmate. But why can't we just take back the bishop? That would be the normal idea. And I guess this is what it is after all after all these moves. At d2, and again, that's, that's forking the king and the rook, but why can't the queen just take it? Queen takes d2, and now it all becomes clear. Queen takes pawn, king takes, knight c4, and there is no way of moving your king anywhere without losing the queen with check. If you go to c1, check, losing the queen with check, and now you come back, and you're getting mated. If you try and step forwards, queen at a3 will be checkmate. So, wow. That is incredible. Um, so that, that's a really long sequence. So of why, and if you don't, I mean if you don't take it, maybe that's the other option. Um, so if if you don't take it with the queen, you could take it with the king, but now you're letting the queen right into your position, and your king is just like in the center of the board. That's not really good. You could go for a counterattack maybe, but black just castles and is safe. Um, so yeah, black gets... <laughs> this is, actually, this, this counterattack sort of <laughs> backfires terribly. At e6, you <laughs> whoops. <laughs> That rook suddenly is pointing at your king. Um, so at e6, maybe not the best, maybe not the best idea. Um, what about this rook? It's just, just hanging around. I mean, what if you just did something normal, like just moved your bishop? Um, 
knight c4, and I think this pawn is falling as well. Just runs here. Queen takes c2 would be the obvious thing to do, but maybe there are even better moves. Like e3, apparently, is nasty. And whenever e6, just castles queenside. Okay, so e so this is just this is just lethal. Um, so that's why bishop d5 is so strong. Um, after after the castles queenside, now black captures d7 with check and is safe and got the attack as as offer rights. Uh, whereas in the other line, after queen takes b2, king e3, and white is where's this line? Um, this is after queen takes b2. Oh, queen takes b2 doesn't work. Yeah, so queen takes b2 immediately doesn't work because of this. The knight here check, knight takes pawn check. Yeah, so that doesn't quite work, he says. And white's getting away. So, so it's not the immediate queen takes b2. Instead of immediate queen takes b2, it's at d2 is important. And then queen takes b2. And then picking up the queen with check. How about that? So that's why it's stronger than bishop at g5, which looks appealing as well. Queen backs off. And we do the same kind of ideas. a3, rook b1, a takes b2, rook takes b2, at b4, knight to b5. So the problem with knight to b5 is... No, there's no problem. So there wasn't a bishop pointing at your rook in this position, like before. Um, maybe a6 is also an idea with the point that if you take the knight, we have a, a we have a dangerous counterattack now, and you're basically losing. Um, so at a6 is quite quite neat. He says knight b5 with the idea to not trade much, but bishop takes d2 check is a nice way to open up the black squares. Bishop takes d2 check. Um, and if he looks at this line, b takes a6 at b7, takes knight at c5, sack, sack, a wild variant, but here white is winning also. Black doesn't have enough compensation. I can understand white doesn't want trade, so knight b5 to avoid that. So he's doing knight b5 to avoid losing too much material because he feels he's under attack. So he was just saying at a6 is, even at a6 is winning. Um, but, but this is the sort of the line. Takes, takes, knight here check, takes, takes. Um, and white is doing quite nicely. And of course, if you don't take, if you just back off king to c8, then then what? Rook takes b4 here. And if you go to king to b8, ooh, then that might be a problem. Knight takes d7. OK, all complicated things. Hi there, barefoot Andrew. So at a6 was interesting, but knight b5 looks perfectly reasonable as well. Bishop takes a2. Uh, what is the idea of that? So, yeah, the big idea for for black here is bishop takes d2, and the point is queen takes, then pawn here. This is this is looking dangerous. Um, and he he says notice pawn at a3, not pawn at c3, because if pawn at c3, knight takes c3, b takes c3, queen takes c3, knight at a4 looks dangerous, but at a6, and white is the one who is attacking. So you you think you're losing your queen? Well, I've got a huge attack coming. So you can't take the queen. Um, so at c3 doesn't work, curiously, whereas at a3, you don't, it's not protected by the queen, it's only, attack, it's only protected once, so you can't sack on it to get rid of a3. And if you counterattack, it takes b4. So this, the idea of this knight at d6 is just to cut off defense of b4, takes, and then take b4. Black's pieces are quite passive on the board right now. So this is uh, offers annotations of this. Bishop takes a2, knight takes a3, 
if knight takes a3, that's one idea. The, another idea is bishop e2, with the idea to drop on a6. If rook b1, sack the queen, and rook c7. And apparently this is mating for, for white. King b8 at c7, king c8. It's this nice line. Um, <coughs> so yeah, rook at b1 doesn't work. Um, and if you go for rook at a1, you just run. Takes, knight here, check. Ooh, that's a nasty one, winning our queen. But wait a second. Um, what do we have in compensation? Takes, takes. Yeah, this is actually pretty decent for black, but quite kind of unclear. Um, and the one move you don't do, apparently, in this position is queen takes a3. After queen takes knight, bishop takes pawn, you don't go queen takes a3, of course, because then rook at b1, and then knight c4 picks up your queen. So all, all lots of whew, lots of difficult ideas. Uh, but going all the way back, so what's what's the idea here? Um, the idea is bishop takes d2 check was a really nasty nasty idea, um, and there was another idea which is bishop c4, which is also interesting. Um, but maybe we won't go quite into that much detail. Okay, let's look at bishop c4. Bishop c4, knight takes c7, bishop takes d2 check, then queen takes d2 at c3 queen f4, and it says in this position black is lacking diagonals to finish to finish white off. Um, so he might grab on a2 just to get a diagonal. Knight takes rook, pawn at d2 check, oof, queen takes d2, c takes d2, takes, queen there check, he goes back, it's just one, one pawn short of mate. <laughs> queen takes rook, knight here check, and uh, uh, well, this is these are some crazy lines. King d8, and uh, Opa says this is not even clear to the computer. Bishop to h5 makes sense. What the computer suggests for pawn at c7 and c8 knight uh, fails tactically. And oh, I mean, he goes quite deep here. Um, looking at some deeper lines, bishop to h5, bishop to h5, rook at a1 check, blocks, takes, takes. Anyway, this is, I think this is going too deep. It's really going too deep. C takes and rook here is checkmate. Uh, that's a, a nice mate there, but I've kind of lost the thread of the action as a whole um, in looking at all these lines. Um, so another line was, yeah, going at c7 seemed natural. King e7, bishop at d, um, bishop d8 was... Interesting. If bishop d8, just rook takes. So you go rook takes a2, rook takes e8. You promote to knight, takes, takes. King goes back, takes. So, yeah, really, I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what to say about this. It's sort of uh, <laughs> really, really crazy stuff. Um, as if king d6, and that's also, yeah. Um, And he's looking at this move b6. Black want to keep a pawn in hand, so it keeps a blocker, then you lose this. Bishop there, check. Queen takes, knight takes, bishop here, check. Uh, at d2, and white would be safe in this position. Well, this has gone a bit too deep, in fact, for me to really appreciate. So let's just back, back up a second. I think the point is that knight b5 is really interesting, but apparently a6 was even better. Um, that's basically the long and the short of it. Knight b5 is really interesting though, and uh, the really interesting response was bishop takes d2. Also, bishop c4 was really, really interesting, hitting that knight and forcing this sack. Uh, but what we saw in the game was bishop takes a2, rook takes a2, and at c3. And here, black makes a mistake with at d6, really bad mistake. Um, as uh, Opa says, 12 teen is a brilliant crazy house player, but this time it doesn't work. No reason to try to go for something special. White has a good, healthy position, but now black just gets free material. So what the thing to go for was just simply f4, for example, block off the diagonal, everything is good. 
Uh, but obviously, remember, this is like, they're both put down to about 30 seconds at this point. At d6 seems to make some kind of sense. If you can go, if you can do two moves, at, you can do three moves at once in bullet, you go this, this, knight here, check, uh, queen takes, knight takes, knight back, checkmate, and so on. At d6, takes, king here. Unfortunately, black gets a rook. Oof. And yeah, black's just getting too much material and it's suddenly um, white is the one on the back foot, and 12 team tries to hide out on a4. He's lost a lot of material though, so the big threat is knight at d6, but he's lost a lot of material in trying to get there. Seemingly safe on a4, but black is crushing, because queen takes d1, the queen on d1 defends against the knight drop on d6, really beautiful move, because he's got double queen protection. At a6, um, and black does have a mate in this position with just bishop at b3, takes takes his checkmate. Um, but sometimes hard to see those, especially in short time controls. So takes back, b takes a6, b7, takes, knight here check, takes, takes, and again, this bishop at b3 is still working. But a takes b5 check, he's also mating. Queen takes b5, knight at b6 check, and then now's the finish. Queen takes b6 is forced, this opens up the rook file with a check. King b5, and queen at c5 checkmate. Okay, so uh, quite an epic game. Um, and thanks, Opera, for helping do the commentary on that one. Uh, so we just got four more games left, and we'll go through these a lot quicker uh, of this Crazy House 960 series. Again, expanding through the center, opening up your bishops, developing the bad knight. Um, castling queenside, not always a good idea. Um, if white ever gets a pawn, that's going to be a problem. So he's going to have to t take another move to, to go king b1. And he does go king b1, king b8. So, well, I guess it's level again. Bishop b5, bishop b4. Knight to d5, bishop drops back, and a really bad move it turns out from Katas, d4. So why is d4 so not a good idea? Um, well first, what should he have played instead? Knight f5 apparently is strong. The two knights um, are threatening things. Maybe threatening even this. Nope, that defends. What are they threatening? If, if black does nothing. If black just does this, what is the threat? This takes in here. Okay. Um, so the line I gave was knight f5. If you just try and go knight e takes, takes, oh, knight h6, and just opening up the king. Um, so it's not something very clear. So it's more, why is this move not a good move? Why is d4 not a good move? It's giving black a pawn, and I'm guessing black can attack first with that pawn. That's just my guess. Bishop takes rook. Bishop takes knight, because the knight was going to take white's rook. Takes, takes. There's a huge material being swapped off, and of course the annoying thing Here's takes takes, so you just realize white's hanging a piece. So that's why it's not such a good idea. Take this takes 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 takes. So if takes takes, the problem was takes takes takes. It's still a problem. That's why it was a problem. So it basically hung a piece. That's why d4 is a problem. It hangs it hangs this knight because of um, the queen ends up on e1. That's the problem with d4. So, and that's exactly what happened in the game. Takes, 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 and takes here. Okay, so white tries to get some compensation by at least attacking first, but bishop takes a2, king takes a2, he takes the rook, exchanges the rooks rather, and throws in a check, and white resigned. The reason white resigns, by the way, is if he steps back with the king, you could go for at h2, at a2. Very strong, completely winning. 
Um, in fact, it's a very nice idea. At a2, um, if he goes here, you're picking up the queen, so he goes to c1. So instead you get a queen, and he blocks, and there's something very funny you can do. You can take here, take here, and, uh, and repeat. Um, it's called the um, queen factory. It may not be the best, but it's just a fun thing you can do. And you don't want to do this on chess.com, because on chess.com you'll get a draw by repetition if you use a queen factory three times. Um, but it's just something fun you can do. Um, so at a2, king c1, promote, blocks, takes, takes, check here, promote, block. Is there something stronger? Takes, takes, bishop a2, king c1, hmm. Maybe rook b1, king to d2, and then I think rook at d1 is mating, um, and it is indeed. Yeah, Stockfish didn't see it, but it is indeed mating. Um, if the king goes here, very nice. Knight d5, check, takes, and bishop at b4, mate. So that's very nice. And if the queen does take, you're losing the queen with checks, so that's that's just going to be lights out. Um, there's going to be a queen here, takes here, and so on. Takes, king takes, queen here. Maybe you have to block with the rook, because otherwise queen takes pawn is going to be really troublesome. So we take this rook, and then we check the rook, king here, bishop e1 check, king tries to run away, knight comes in, knight f4 check, king tries to run away. Okay, and now we have a back rank set up, so the rook can just take everything. Uh, is there anything else he could do? He could try and come here, but then this is a very beautiful mate. Okay, so that's really pretty. But okay, there's actually an, an even neater way of winning this position. Um, and, and that is the following. It's called a moon mate idea. You hang a piece because you want to take it later with check. The reason you're hanging the queen here on d1 rather than e1 is because now when you go rook at b1, you're taking the queen with check. That is the power of the moon mate. Queen takes c1, king takes queen, queen at e1 check, and now we have the classic back rank configuration where you take it, take it again, and it's checkmate. Knight blocks off any escape. Um, but as, as we said, saw um, white just resigned. White saw the writing on the wall at this point and didn't continue. So, so that was an interesting game. Um, I guess what was the key turning point? Yeah, the key turning point was hanging this piece uh, because the bishop takes rook, queen takes, and this central file. Games can turn on just little mistakes like that which are not so little, even in 1 plus 0. Okay, so we had a new position. Um, f4 opens up bishop and queen. And g3, just to get this bishop diagonal open. So really nice attacking position, this one, um, for hitting. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering about this move, a4. The reason I'm sort of debating this a4 is that you're giving the knight an outpost on b4. So in chess, you wouldn't want to do that. A3 would be much stronger, and I think this is true in Crazy House as well. So A4 was maybe a slight mistake. Um, and of course the point with A3 is that if black goes A4, you can always go B4, just like in chess. So A3 would have been stronger. A4, rook A6, got a rook lift from Katask. Knight B2, knight B4, indeed, like I said, knight B4. Castle's queenside, it's a very holy queenside. Rook C6, so I'm a bit nervous for white in this position. But white is 12 teen, so we shouldn't be too nervous for him. Bishop takes c6, bishop d4. This of course is the this of course is the the problem, the long diagonal. And I'd have thought bishop d4 doesn't help much because black could just take take and replace the bishop on c6 and improve his position. Um, but apparently why not bishop at f6? Um, apparently you just go bishop at e5, so 
bishop here, bishop e5. And that's what happened in the game. Amazing. You are willing to give up a piece for a pawn in order to block off your opponent's diagonals. It's a really important lesson. Rook to d8, add to d6. Again, it looks like that's not a good idea. I mean, takes, takes, I can't even take back because of this, this diagonal. So what did black play in this position? He played bishop at b6, which turned out to be a mistake. What should he have played? He should have just taken this. It's incredibly strong. Um, also, c takes d6, e takes d6, both are reasonable. Um, but rook takes d6, just crushing. Um, but instead, Katas went for, for a move attacking the queen. And and suddenly, white turns the tables in this in this game. Just takes the bishop. Um, and the point is, you can't take it back because this is checkmate. Um, so suddenly, you're you're facing a mate threat. Um, so you took back the pawn. Queen took a pawn itself. Um, reasonable. The bishop gets free, but now you take the knight. So white picked up a lot of material. Takes, takes, opening up the rook, and then the pawn helps control control the center. Oops, we're losing our queen. No worries. White's still completely fine. Bishop f6, so we're not looking so good on this diagonal anymore. Knight to d7. King to d7. e6. Check. Another nice move. Uh, also another nice move is knight, knight c5 check, but he goes for e6 check. What's the idea? If queen takes, knight c5 is the threat. So king takes, bishop c4, blocks. Again, black seems to be playing this quite nicely, but it doesn't seem to be the end of the world for black just yet, and yet trouble is looming. Rook takes d5. Rook takes d5, indeed. If bishop takes d5, bishop takes, we got too much material, and that king is too open. So black goes straight away for a counterattack. At a2, king takes, no worries. King backs off. Rook takes pawn with an attack on the queen. Takes the rook, takes the queen. Rook at a3. Looks like black might have something. It's a really nice attack from Katask. Takes the knight. One would have to be nervous in this position. Pawn at c3, drawing the king out. She can't go back. If king c1, knight at a2. And whichever way you go, you get mated. But you just take it. And now this knight check is defended, this knight check is defended. The only knight check that you can play is knight e4 check. And you breathe a sigh of relief. You are actually just about safe. But black is short a pawn. Black is short a pawn from doing anything. You just back off like so, is that safe? Completely safe. Black is a pawn short. Pawn here, king here would be extremely nerve-wracking to say the least. Queen here, check. Queen here, check. Sorts of ideas. And I'm not sure, hmm, would it be, would it be mate though if black had a pawn? Um, if black could just take a pawn, would it be mate? Um, take a pawn and block off, I mean, it doesn't make any difference. Apparently it still wouldn't be made. At f6, important to go to c1. Yeah, it still wouldn't be made. Interesting. You'd need a second pawn. So black is really short pawns, basically. But uh, one has to be accurate. So rook takes c um, f5 was enough to win. Um, the point being, of course, if you move the queen, then other stuff is falling. If, if I don't know, queen takes c4, then even rook takes f6. 
is uh, is good. Um, okay, so it takes, takes, takes. What happened in the game was this check. So so he gets he gets a potential knight f6, knight c3 rather check, but then king a3 and there's no follow up. Um, he took he took it back here. Bishop to a1. White has all the material. Bishop to e5. Knight to c8 check. So, so actually, long ago, black resigned. I mean, in this position, rook d takes f5, black resigned. This is this is more like a fantasy continuation. Um, this didn't actually happen in the game. Bishop here, bishop here. Uh, they they saw the writing was on the wall long before this. This is just a fantasy continuation. So two more games to go. Game nineteen, Katask is white. Twelve team is black. Uh, it was this long diagonal, again, the same position as the last one, quite dangerous looking position. Um, and notice 12 teen again sets up the barricade against this um, long diagonal, against the bishop's diagonals. He, he really wants to shut out those bishops. He's And he does so. I'd say maybe 12 teen makes a lot more pawn moves than you would expect. Um, in favor of shutting out these long diagonals, and he goes for, he likes developing his own bishops, whereas Katask likes developing his knights. Um, knight a4 was played. Um, there was an even stronger move here, actually an incredibly strong move from Katask, which is at e7. Just impossible move to defend against. Um, if black takes the knight, you take the queen, uh, you take a knight with check, and then you take the pawn. Um, very strong position for white. Uh, but he, instead he moved the knight, uh, queen c4, he went e5, and e5, trying to open up the diagonal, but this turns out to be a mistake. Again, e7 is this, is really strong. If you go for a counterattack, checkmate, actually even c3, queen takes e2, rook f2, queen doesn't actually have any future. He wants checkmate, but there is nothing. Um, and white is actually crushing. Uh, but hard to see. He goes e5, and um, black's move in this position was b3. That, that's the strong move in this position. If you try and defend the pawn, it takes... Well, yeah, this is all very confusing. I mean, why can't you just go like this? Because then queen takes e2 is an idea. Going for this. Bishop takes e5 is an idea, going for a pawn on 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 c2. Queen takes e2 apparently is strong. So in this position, what, what's the difference? The difference is pawn at d2, bishop d2, queen here. It's threatening this. Um, and he backs off. And then we go bishop takes e5. Rook d2, tracing our queen away, and we can go here. So, okay, um, why did that not work in the other line? Um, with uh, e7 immediately, not entirely clear if we go this, 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 this check. Oh, can't do that check. What? Um, So rook f2, sorry, you go at d2 check, that was the idea. Bishop takes d2, queen here. What's the difference? The difference is queen takes g4 check. He takes d8 check. Lots of trouble. Knight to e1. Well, they win a knight. You win a knight and you defend. You defend c2, whereas in the other line he didn't have a knight. So b3 is a very powerful move for black. Um, and uh, there's a crazy line that this could even happen. Um, but if you just do a normal... So, so this looks dangerous because of knight here check, threatening queen takes bishop checkmate, but actually that's a mistake, because white can just take that knight and 
this is a very beautiful checkmate. With that knight, that's checkmate. So that's something lurking in the position. Um, so bishop d4 turned out to be a good defense. c3 is also, maybe you could defend like this. Um, it's a bit strange, but... Uh, so c3 doesn't really work, yeah. So c c3 is not strong. So bishop e4 apparently is the way to defend. Um, but okay, he played queen takes e2, and that turns out, instead of going b3, he went queen ta uh, takes e2, and that turned out to be a mistake from 12 teen, um, and it ended up costing him this game because black got a big attack going, um, and there was no coming back from it. Just It lasted a few mo uh, uh, more moves, but he just came in with his queen and, uh, well, he'd resigned by the, already by this point. He saw this as mate, but the mate is as follows. So you can promote, takes, takes, and checkmate. And um, finally, the very last game, just quickly look at it. Um, this is a bit of a disappointing one from 12 team because he had, had a, a nice position, but then he'd given up a knight and he just saw this position and he resigned because he was afraid if I go here, pawn here, winning the rook, queening. But actually, if you calculate it through at f2, you're absolutely right that if you give up the queen, that's uh, so if you don't give up the queen, then this is taking getting a queen and your back rank is, is in trouble. Maybe, but if takes, takes, bishop takes rook, takes, rook here check, you get to take back the knight. Maybe black has got a slight edge, but actually this is not so bad for white. Um, and even this is a possibility, but maybe this is worse. I mean, it's, it's unclear. Uh, rook takes not clear. Okay, so that's that's the situation. Um, so, so the series ended 10 games all. Now, let's have a look. Um, it looks like Katask and Offer might be playing or might be about to be playing, but is it in 960? It is in 960. So let's just open this up. So just now we have Katask and Offer Starting up some crazy house, 960. Um, which is great timing for us, because we can just hop in. Um, I need to put this somewhere else. Um, wow, this is not the right size. Um, I was really lucky the other day that everything was just, just the right size. Um, So something's wrong with timings. So if I go too narrow, yeah. Everything is fixed in terms of the size here. Okay, so it's gonna be hard to play bullet when you let your time run down to six seconds. Um, what? I've got to just take my logo completely out. It's just getting in the way. Um, and they agree a draw. Just trying to get, trying to get to grips with the new system. That was a rated game. So Offer got that was Offer's first rated game on PyChess, but obviously there were some technical difficulties. So we see GB Tami and Jal Kalanda in the in the chat. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this analysis of the series between Katask and Jasugi ninety nine. Um, we could be in for a treat if we get a series between Upper Wazen and Katask. But it may be that Upper is having computer issues. So let's see. Upper Wazen. Up 
Raisin TV. Okay, I'm not sure if it's going to happen, but um, hi there, BFL. Um, well, we're 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 hoping we're going to get a live stream of Kataskins off the and but that won't have the benefit of all that deep analysis I was offering you for the past hour and a half or so of twelve team against Katask. So it's good to see people in, in the Twitch chat. Um, it's been a slow burner because people are not used to Crazy House 960. But yeah, I see some names, familiar names. Beefell, Granak, Jarl, PKR, Smash Time Fools, Chuck Moulton. So welcome all. But are we going to get a game? Let's see. Um, the task of a Wazen are playing right now. That, that, that passed me by. So just to play from the beginning of this game, how to develop these pieces. He likes, he likes the knights, those knights. They're going to get in. And so it's quite nice from off. He's picking up a piece. Yeah, knights can be lethal. Bfell says, I haven't played ZH960, but it looks fantastic. It is. If you want to play, go to pychess.org, um, click login in the in the top right, and it'll ask if you want to authorize your Lee Chess account to be used on the site, and say yes, and then you can play. Or you could even play anonymously, but best to play with your Leech account. Um, so the name of the server is pychess.org. Like Leech Chess, but with PY. And it's called PyChess. Uh, and it's made by, by Leech Chess people, but it's not Leech Chess. So white is just short of pawn. Go king takes, yeah, short a couple of pawns, in fact. Ooh, but it's just a time. The task is so fast. Rook takes bishop he wants, but knight there's a double check, so you'll have to go king here. Ooh, didn't do the double check, but he's going for a draw. He won't want to draw. He'll want to, he'll want to win this one. Even Katask will want to win this one. He'll want the flag. And it's going to be tough for Opper with only one second left. Yeah, very tough. And uh, Opper gets flagged in game one. So Biffel is logging into the site. That's wonderful. Now, I'm not going to be able to see the, the rematch, so I'd better try and get onto the TV. There we go. Um, and I'm going to try and see it from Opus perspective. If I can... Katask clock is running. And they start. They start. He likes his... Yeah, so this position we've seen, Opa likes this, this maneuver with the knights. He's blocking off the diagonal. I think he's maybe castling queenside. You've got to watch out for this one. Ah, I'm slightly confused. Did I miss something? I'm hearing peace sounds, but I'm not seeing moves. I'm very confused. I'm very confused by that move as well. I see. He, he's worried about this. Yeah, he really wants to castle queenside, you can see here. So the way you cast queen size, you drag your king on top of your rook in Crazy House 960. Okay, it takes the bishop. Is he going for this? It works, maybe. No, maybe it doesn't, because the knight takes bishop first. It takes, takes, and now he's going to... Ooh. Takes the rook. Ooh, he's winning the queen. Oh, this is lethal from Opa. Can... His queen is not so developed, though.
So he was having trouble casting, apparently, was Katas. Um, he said <laughs> he's chatting while playing. He was going for a castle and wasn't able to. Now this is this is lethal. This is knight here check, queen here checkmate. Oh, sorry, knight here check rather is more accurate, and queen here checkmate. Oh no 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 no, no, knight here check. Sorry. King goes here. Um, bishop here check. King here, queen here, king here. Uh, it is mate, but I'm not seeing the full line. Um, after king takes bishop. Knight here, check, king here. Uh, but this is this is obviously mate, it's just, just how to find it. Bishop here, check, king here. Queen here, checkmate. Of course, queen here, checkmate. Okay, so he hasn't, he's developed, both sides are really making sure to develop their queens, which is good. Ooh, that's an interesting threat. Bishop takes f6. He does it despite the fact the queen is protecting, because he just wants a pawn to get in on f8. That's nice. He's going to take it. No, no. He just says, oh, the rook's trapped. I can just chill. No need to take it. Maybe you get a bishop one day or something. He's taking too long thinking about it, though. That's the only problem. That pawn is supposed to be a thorn in the side of um, a thorn in the side of black. Now, there's one thing I'm really grateful of, actually. Is in the past when I commentated, better take now, on um, pie chess, I wouldn't be able to make arrows while commentating. Go on, take it. Um, but I can. So this is really cool. So this is really crushing uh, from Opa, but can he see the mate? Something like rook takes bishop, king takes pawn there, and then pawn there, or something. Okay, he's going a kind of slower route. Double threat, very difficult to stop. Very difficult to stop. Pawn there, pawn there. This is the problem. And pawn there, rook here is also a problem. Yeah. Pawn there takes, knight takes rook, rook here. And, well, yeah. So that was lethal from upper. Really lethal. So Katask is joking that uh, M. Michael now has to study 960 extra positions of 960ZH where you're not allowed to castle because he's been having castling problems apparently. Ah, uh, is that not hanging? Is this, there's some there's some magic going on here that, that keeps this pawn protected. Um, I'm very confused. This looks hairy, to say the least. Don't understand this move. I see. Now I understand it. He wants pawn there. Oh, he's almost got it. He's just one escape square. Ooh. Takes, takes, takes. And then that pawn will be return here. He has to run. Or take. Yep, that takes also works. Ooh. This is painful. Painful, and only five seconds on the clock. This is also important. No material, and also very little time. Rook here is checkmate. Well, okay. Misses the mate in one, but anyway. Okay.
So Katask strikes back. Okay. Yep, Papa likes his knights, that's for sure. I'm, I'm imagining like knight here. Okay, I see, he wants to bring his queen in. <clears throat> Very sensible. That's something which takes the knight, okay. And, oh, I was thinking knight here, just, but okay, this, that'll probably be suicidal because this is twice defended and twice attacked, so it doesn't quite work. So knight here is quite good, you get it with tempo. And you want, oh my goodness, this is looking clever. So he wants to take the bishop, maybe, or, okay, take the rook, and then take on this square, oh, or, or this, or this, yeah, this is very nice, so if bishop takes, queen takes, and he's taking this queen, <clears throat> oh, he's just, just, just chomping, oh, keep chomping, oh, oh, this, this is cruel from Offa, this is just, like, brutal, this is pawn here check, <clears throat> he didn't do it, though, ah, he should have done pawn there, check the last, the last move, and then put a knight on somewhere. But it's still brutal. That was, wow, <laughs> wow. that was brutal. That was brutal from Arthur. Um, so they've both been brutal to each other, frankly. They're, they're, they're taking turns being brutal to each other. Um, yeah, no weaknesses, I can see in, in no clear weaknesses. <clears throat> So we see the same. What is the idea? Just defend this. Yeah, this. Oh. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is so painful. Like maybe this this particular nine sixty position is just is just too painful. <laughs> Pawn here coming. <laughs> I don't think this is in it. Rook here, king here. Rook takes bishop. <laughs> oh, you can't just go for greed like this. No. Rook here, king here. Rook takes bishop, king here. Maybe he was afraid he couldn't finish it off. Rook takes rook, king takes rook. Surely that was mating. Just ping two. Well, of course, this works. Maybe he's worried about just playing fast, though. Um, but I can't see the mate here. Queen takes pawn, maybe. Takes the knight there, check. He just takes the queen. Okay. Queen takes pawn, maybe. <coughs> okay. Offers just literally just taking all the pieces. Like, not. <laughs> defend, defend, as long as you don't get mated, it's good. <clears throat> queen here's checkmate. Oh yeah, very nice. Leaving the space for the queen to come in. Very beautiful. So instead of, many, many people just go bishop direct check, but he allowed for the block and then goes in with the queen, leaving the space. So that way he picks up an extra piece. Okay, so we got a new position, is it? Um, where the king is kind of already castled, um, and there's already a long diagonal. Yeah, this is looking absolutely brutal again from Arthur. Or is it? I think it is. It's going to be a sack. No. No. I thought it was queen takes pawn was coming. Queen takes pawn was surely coming. But, 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 but where was the mate? New queen, come on, new queen. And the queen takes pawn is coming with checkmate. Uh, as long as you don't get mated, this is fine. What? That's check. No, it's not. You can step up. Black resigns. <coughs> no way of stopping the mate. Any rook check, you just, rook block, you just take it.
Okay, same position again with the castled king, inviting the fianchetto. Okay, so yeah, this is very important to defend these light squares around the, the sfianchetto king. Doesn't even want to take it, just, just interesting. What's the score? Um, it's hard to keep track of scores. Um, you have to search it up yourself, you tell us. <clears throat> so playing, yeah, just put a pawn here, now you're very safe. So up is very safe, but he's down on time. But that's a nice move he's found. And where's the finish? He wants another knight, maybe, for here. He could have just picked off this knight. But... Yeah, I'm not clear. Where's the finish? 21 seconds against 25 seconds, because that's also part of the game. Again, he's hunting for a knight, although he could have just taken one. And that's going to be mate. No? What? I don't believe it. That was mate. That was double check. Double check mate. Okay. <clears throat> he gets he gets a, a rook, and a rook will be surely enough to finish things off, will it? Ah, oh, this is worrying as heck. Block. Rook here. What is the concern? Oh, because it's Opera defending like crazy. And, uh, wow, wow, wow. Opera defending like crazy that game. Um, wow, okay, new position. I'm not sure why something else just popped up that second. We're back into Opera against Gatask. Lots of other cool variants on this site, by the way, like using Serowan chess pieces. Uh, we look forward to the day when Yasa discovers Pi Chess. He hasn't yet dropped by. Um, oh, I'm in PyChess.org TV rather than in Opera Ways in TV. Not quite sure why. Um, so anyway, just playing through this game again. So moving the Rook Pawn first makes a lot of sense. Takes, takes. Oh, yes. Interesting. And what's happening now? Um, takes here yeah, lots of pressure on. <clears throat> so yeah, off the ways and put a lot of pressure, but this can just always be taken, maybe. Takes oof. Yeah, well, black only has a pawn. This is not gonna. This is not gonna end well. Just a rook on the back rank even. Lethal, lethal. <clears throat> Black only has a pawn, so what can he do? He resigns. So offers climbing, climbing the rankings. He's overtaken Katask in rating on on the on this site. Not that ratings mean anything at all. But that's a that's a tough, that's a tough person to overtake. It's a tough person to feed to farm, as it were. Um, sometimes I'm hearing. Peace moves. I don't see moves, so it's very just to see. This we're finished with, but yeah, we'll we'll make a new study of these games. Maybe we'll we'll add these games to the to the Jasugi ninety nine Katas study. I think that's what we'll do. Hi there, PKR. Four and a half, four and a half. Is that really right? I feel Op has had the better of this series. Notice this rook is not defended. It's a little bit uncomfortable. So the knight can't move. But um, Oppa noticed that. I don't think Katas quite noticed it. Um, which is why he blocked the file. Yeah, lack of blockers is a real issue in ZH960. <clears throat> and you can see, hi there, Smash Time Fools, we're having a good stream, aren't we? 
spamming spamming the link to my blog. Yeah, I should spam my YouTube. Everyone should should uh, subscribe to my YouTube because uh, all the best stuff ends up there. So I'll just uh, spam my YouTube as well. Um, my blog needs updating, that's for sure. And where's the mate? He's going for rook here, and he's going to do it anyway. Takes a queen, and the queen is going to mate. <clears throat> so, yeah, I feel Oppa's definitely had the better of this series. <laughs> and Smash Time 4 says, creepiest emote ever. Yeah, most self-publicizing -pub emote ever. I don't know. <laughs> I made it myself, right? And I'm not an artist. What I quite like about it is that you can read even though it's just in pixels. That's what I thought was cool. <laughs> and Onimar said, dang, these are guys are so overrated at 1600. <laughs> I wonder who that is. Oh yeah, painful. You can't take with the pawn. He's saying this a lot. He's sort of <clears throat> he's opened the file, so it's really uncomfortable. This this is hanging. Oh, he doesn't even take it. Oh, painful, painful. This, this queen is getting hunted. Uh, so painful. He has to move the queen out the way. Queen takes queen. Oh, nice. Takes to the knight defending the mate. Very nice. And, ooh, he's lost his protection of f7 with bishop takes. <clears throat> and he resigns, does he? Because knight takes rook is coming. That's so painful. Knight takes rook is coming, and it's Offa who benefits from the queen trade after all that. He was dying that game. So that was quite interesting. Okay, so we have this king-queen-rook set up. And he, yeah, we, we can see the plan. He wants to go g3, f2. And we're seeing a little bit of the Jusugi idea. Just block off that bishop file. Very important. Smash I fool us until I get one emote or two. I'm not sure. Um, I don't really do this stuff. I just, I just, uh, I, I like Twitch basically just because everyone uses Twitch, um, rather than because, um, in terms of watching old videos, I, I quite like YouTube. Um, so how to finish this one off? Because I like the fact on YouTube you can collect stuff. You can collect old, old, old playlists and stuff. You can't really. Oh, oh, oh. One takes. What's the idea? He's. Oh, I see. He was opening up the queen. That was the idea. Box. Well, this has been intense. He swings over the queen. Oh my goodness! Look at that. Oh, that was beautiful. This just, just. <clears throat> and the queen is back next to the king, defending everything. But this side of the board is quite open. <clears throat> so he has to watch out for these squares. But black just doesn't have material for now. For now, what black does have is a lot of time. Um, and oh, the king just evacuates. That's that's quite beautiful. But where's? Is time is the issue here? 0 0.8 seconds. And I, I think he flagged that one. It's just my my connection didn't didn't pick it up. I'm not sure if I get one emote slot or two. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. But yeah, I don't I don't really dig the whole Twitch thing. It's more like it's very convenient. And everyone and it's what I use to watch stuff live and what everyone uses to watch stuff live. I don't like the fact they have so much advertising. Um, but that's what everyone uses, so that's that's what we're stuck with. So pawn takes knight, he's hanging knight takes c2. Uh-oh, <clears throat> uh-oh. Both covered. So he's attacking the knight, which is defending. Oh, it's all over. 
Is it all over? Knight takes, you go with the pawn first. He had enough pawns to, to get the back rank mate. Yeah. So you go pawn, queen. As long as he had two pawns in that final position, I can't quite remember if he did. And it's definitely fine. The king can't, the king can't run away. Because you go pawn, queen. I can't remember if he did have two, but I'm assuming he had two pawns. This position, well, this is almost looking chess-like in the way he set it up. But this square is weak. He's not going for it. Seems interesting targeting this square when it's so well defended. <clears throat> but I guess it mean he has a hit on the queen. Bishop takes pawn. He was afraid of bishop takes this pawn. Can't take the queen because of pawn there check. Yeah. Well, we'll see if it works. This idea. I guess it's the knight and the bishop combined is what makes it lethal. So. One here, check or something. King. So this knight is hanging at some point. He wants to file, but just gets blocked, and he's lost his queen. Pawn, yeah, pawn here will get taken. So he's actually defended for now. Oh, this is in insane. Who's winning this? White's only got knights and bishops, though. Oh, but he's left open this square. Defending like crazy. 12 seconds against 11 seconds. It is kind of a time scramble, but there should be mate. Yeah, there's mate. Offer castles, Katas castles. On move one. Isn't that fun? Knight's a great defender of the king. So yeah, they're both really ha happy with their position, just with the, the bishops. <clears throat> he wanted he wanted d5. He's not getting e5, he's getting f5 though. Is that good enough? Maybe. Develops the bishops, but now this bishop is looking a bit silly. I guess you can't have it all. Takes, takes. Oh, he finds a place for the bishop. Wonderful. And he gets an open rook file. So takes, 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 dong. Okay, I thought a pawn would land there, but that's interesting. He goes for the knight landing there. Oh, this is painful. Look at this. Pawn, pawn, and another knight would be mating. The knight's just trying to find a space for his king. He's got no space for his king. Bishop, key defender. Bishop and rook and queen. <clears throat> His king is in a net. He's trying to get rid of the rook, because the rook is the one that's stopping him running away. Okay, now he's got an escape route at least. Bishop takes rook. Reasonable. Could take it, just about. Bishop there, you could still run back. Oh, but there were discoveries. This is risky. Oh, it's... It, He's going to get discover, discovered. Discovered. Some sort of discovery. Knight here check was. No, his king goes, still could go here. Um, not clear. This king is not looking healthy. Let's put it this way. And time. Time is not looking healthy either. So Katas gets the win. I mean, strong position. Basically, in the final position, the queen is also always threatening to come in as well. Ooh. Big sacrifice on h7. <clears throat> yeah, black castled, white didn't sacrifice on h7. This pawn is weak. Just going for simple. Oh, interesting. This this has just gone too fast for me. Just 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 hold on a one one second, one second, one second. Pawn here check. Very interesting. So you can't take it because it's checkmate. So you go here. This is important. Takes 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 defends. Yes, this is interesting. Okay. So knight takes rook is the problem. I think I think it's a problem. Knight takes rook and rook here, but Queen takes rook. Queen takes rook is even stronger. My goodness. Cause then knight takes queen comes with check. And rook and queen are surely mating, although I don't see the full line. With check, 
Oh. But that's knight takes knight's fine, because you have knight here at the end of it, winning the queen. Oh, he's walked into the queen. He's walked into the line of the queen. He should have just taken that knight. Oh, that was scary. But maybe I was wrong. It's going quite fast. Okay. Takes, takes. Just bishop here seems fine, but okay. He's going for a counterattack. It looks risky because at g2 comes first. But maybe white has the extra pawn though, so it's more dangerous. I think he's just going for this. Takes, takes, and black doesn't have a pawn. No, he's not. He's, he's taking it easy. <coughs> Oof, yeah, I, I don't know. I think he should. I thought he should have just gone for it. Pawn takes pawn directly instead of playing this. But maybe I'm wrong. Oh, yeah, maybe. Oh, this is looking uncomfortable. Knight takes bishop. Knight takes bishop is a threat. He can always go bishop takes rook if he wants. Eek. Knight takes rook, rook takes. Is there a counter play? King takes rook. He has a rook. What can you do with the rook? Rook here doesn't work. Knight here doesn't work. Knight here maybe works. Oh, rook here, rook here, rook here. Okay, that can take everything. Rook takes pawn. Oh, yeah. No, queen takes. Queen takes rook. No, it doesn't work. Bishop takes knight. Okay, he wants the queen. Rook takes pawn. What's wrong? Was it a flag? Mm. Wow. I'm just going to turn this around so I'm seeing it from Offa's perspective. <clears throat> so it's Offa going for the big, big, big center. Light squares are an issue. If you had a pawn, you'd just want to solidify things. And since he can't... Yeah, he just does it with the rook. Right there's interesting. It covers this square, but what about that one? I guess he's hoping this knight will do the job. I know, it was an aggressive move. Interesting, of course. <clears throat> Always go pawn takes rook first before moving the queen, but okay. This looks actually wow, that's a nice find. This pin bishop takes queen takes bishop. If bishop takes queen, bishop takes pawn is lethal. King takes queen here is checkmating. Queen to here. So queen takes bishop exactly. White resigns. Beautiful play from Offa. Okay, what is this? You really want to take this pawn? I guess he does. Ooh, what is this? He just wants it. He just says no peace. Ah, uh, this this is pure offer. <laughs> this is pure offer. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> so if bishop takes queen, knight takes pawn. But it's, what's the use of that? He's only got a pawn. And now he's he's thinking of do I take the knight? I think that takes the knight's correct. Pawn and rook's not enough. Just blocks. The bishops actually prevent. Oh, this is dangerous now. But he's going to get the queen with check. 
that's the problem, and black resigns, because it's takes, king there, king takes queen with check. Which is lethal. So, we're having the rook lifts. This is always a bad sign if you see rook lifts, because it means they're just playing for fun. No, I'm just joking. It means that the series might be close to being over, though. That that's the sad thing, because maybe they said last two, and that's why they're doing the rook lifts. <laughs> so as as Legion Destroyer said, nine sixty. Yeah, so it's, it was quite a standard setup to begin with. This one. Okay, that's the threat. Um. Yeah, what was the finish? All the checks are covered, it's quite impressive. Again, he's just going for this very simple idea. Distract, king takes pawn, knight here check, queen check, mate. Wow, upper is on fire! <laughs> Okay, and it doesn't look like it's the last one, because they're not playing the rook with this one. Okay, this king is looking uncomfortable, it wants to get castled quickly, but how? Yep, uncomfortable. Here's a threat. He's going to take it. Takes. Okay, it looks like Oppa's getting mated here. Here. Nope. Exactly. Here. Pawn here. It's looking very risky. Just, he's just trying to open up. Whoa. How come Black. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How come Black gave up the Queen? This just probably blocks. So. Just backs off. He needs to find a weakness somewhere. Going for this and this, okay. Queen takes knight. Is knight really that powerful? No, he didn't take... Okay, I'm just not seeing things properly. Knight takes knight. Oh, knight takes knight. Okay, so he's just going for queen here, checkmate. Very simple. Very simple plan. Saying, you can't mate me. And Katask is like, ugh, oh dear. Katask is like, I want to run. And against most players, they play that move and run, but Opera, of course, sees the knight check. Okay, so we see this, both players getting out their knights. Um, knight takes c7 is a threat, defended. This is kind of sensitive. He doesn't castle, he goes just for rook d1. So maybe he's thinking of castling king kingside. Yeah, the bishop on d6, there was of course a threat of knight takes pawn, queen takes bishop ideas. Even if rook takes knight, queen takes bishop check, and that was almost mating. So you have to be very careful there. Um, although knight takes pawn, so he defends it. That is the weak square in the position. Okay, defense. There is pawn there, knight there. Or knight there first, pawn there, but in some order, pawn there, knight there looks looks kind of annoying. <clears throat> but probably that's not a good idea because the queen gets in somehow. Oh, he thinks he's got a back rank. Bishop. But where's the, where's, oh, he takes the queen. Defends like crazy. Bishop there, check. He's got a queen in hand, so he wants a knight here, check next. Um, but, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Was there nothing? Apparently not. And he's running with the king. And this diagonal's dangerous looking. Don't, don't want to take this. Just block, just block. Oh. Bishop takes pawn is coming. Just run. Bishop takes rook. And now you need to find a mate. Queen there 
check. Put there, right there. Queen takes. Queen takes. There is something here. There is something here. Rook there, check. <clears throat> oh, 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 oh. Something happened. Something happened, and they began another game already. But it, it was already. It was clearly mating. Um, okay. So just to go into the live game. So this is the, the Knights Out game. Again. So we have the same position. This time offer is white. Oh my goodness, because black just wants a pawn. I mean, not just wants a pawn, but he wants a pawn and get in on the back rank. Oh, that's not going to work, is it? He just wants a pawn and then rook there's check. What? What? Rook there's checkmate? What? I don't get it. Rook here's checkmate. What? Okay, you got to take this. But then rook here's checkmate. <laughs> no, it's not. King can come up, but but but, <clears throat> yeah, something funny happened. Um, really, not bishop here. <clears throat> that really cuts the king off because the bishop and the knight really cut the king off. But maybe king here was safe. That's the problem. Hmm. It's hard to see. Okay, surely the queen here is checkmate. Yes, yes, yes. Queen here is checkmate. So it's apparently twelve eleven, um, according to to Oppa. Which I find surprising. I feel, yeah, interesting. So I feel, I feel like Oppa's got some really big crushes in some of these games, but. Um, so both sides want diagonals. Hmm. So it's it's felt like offers have more of an edge than 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 apparently is the, than is the reality. Let's put it that way. So, do we want to rook on the back rank? Yes, we do. And then... So what's what's the purpose of this? Takes a bishop, interesting. So why does he want the bishop? Ooh, he wants here to here. Knight takes rook would be... Ooh, that's a nasty move. That's a really nasty move. If the rook ever moves this, you're taking this bishop. So if it doesn't move, but now you've got boom, 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 boom. Uh, yeah, maybe there was an intermezzo of this, but now this is just nasty. White king is so safe, up on time. I mean, it's like Katas might be resigning even at some point. It's lethal. Where's the mate though? <clears throat> just a oh, we can't go bishop here. Ah, oh, bishop, queen, bishop. Okay, there's the mate. Okay, so we, we continue. Game 25. There was a bit of a pause there, so I'm always a little bit nervous. Pause might mean they say last two or something. Um, oh! Didn't offer win that game. Okay, I miss I misread it then. <clears throat> Maybe it's because I'm looking from White's perspective accidentally, and so I'm thinking that White's win <laughs> that Offer's winning when just White's winning. Um, there, there's a crazy idea. Of this with this right there check. No, it doesn't work. <clears throat> we were seeing this. Oh, what 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 what? Oh yes, of course. It's defended by the rook. I'm being a complete idiot. Oh my goodness. Um, oh, this is terrible. Offer's getting crushed this game. Or is he? Or is he? He's 
just locked off. <clears throat> queen takes bishop, king takes, what? Yes, king takes knight, of course. Queen takes bishop, king takes bishop here. So queen takes bishop. He would actually run, queen takes bishop, king here. King takes knight. Ah, is it, okay, I'm, I'm giving really bad commentary right now because I'm not understanding what's going on. Um, he wants to take here, but the knight defends. So pawn here, check. No. Of course, that's a mate threat, which I was completely ignoring. Um, just wants a heavy, heavy mates. Black resigns. Can't find anything. Okay, that that game just went too quickly for me. I did not follow. So let's try and. Let's try and be a bit more observant this game. And we're looking from Offa's perspective. So he opens up his bishops. And I guess g2 is his long-term objective. So the rook is, is defended like this. He might do moves like this at some point, but no, that would hang the bishop. <coughs> so rather he rejects, he closes up that file. Yeah, so offers definitely the one try, try try on the attack here, but actually then this is a good counter. Good counter from from Katask. Oh, I'm not sure. Suddenly I don't know, white's feeling a bit more comfortable. Because Black needs to get in on e2, basically. So it's like, is that reasonable? Okay. So he wants knight h6. Takes, yeah, this is the problem. In some order. <coughs> if rook takes rook, what then? King takes. Because otherwise rook at g8 was mate. So blocks, takes, takes. Now he's got a knight. Knight to Knight check is covered. So he's fine. Takes, takes, to rook on the back rank. Defends, takes, takes. Oh dear, oh dear. So this is trouble for Katask. Yep, it's all over. But time, it would be all over, but time. Can he find the mate? Not so easy, not so easy. Um, yeah, off the ways and TV just turning it on. Um, where's the mate? Where's the final mate? Um, He needs a mate, so something like knight here check. It's hard. I mean, there there is a mate here, but um, so you go takes takes rook here. I mean, this also works, but it's just yeah. Um, you need to do something like knight here check takes rook here check takes rook takes rook check blocks and rook there checkmate something like this. Um, yeah. And Offa says his favorite was the one with pawn at h7, of course. Pawn at h7 takes g8. Of course that was his favorite. And now 12 teams asking, are any of you guys down to play me? I know Offa has to go because it's 10 past 11 Central European time. Um, so if I go request a computer analysis, hopefully it's going to... Oh, aren't I logged in? How come I'm not logged in? Authorized by chess. 
Um, so that that last game, request infantry analysis. Yeah, why am I not logged in? So I just wanted to, uh, uh, just verifying that mate in that final position, which is correct. It's just ha having to play it fast. It's a mate in four. Uh, was there a faster mate? I mean, so the fastest mate was in this position. King takes g1, knight at e2. And um, if you keep on moving, then you have rook here check and rook here checkmate. So knight d2, you have to take this knight, and then you go rook at f1, king takes, knight here, king here, and rook here, checkmate, the king can't get out. So that's mate. Um, so that was that was another way of doing, doing the mate. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and this is going to be fun for all of you, um, so hi there, Picasata. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you how to get these games onto Lee Chess, because after all, this is a Lee Chess stream we're doing here. So you click on this download button, and it will actually open um, it will open will it? <coughs> Yes, it will open, in fact, a PGN of Offer Wazen's games on this site. He's played quite a few variant games, but we just want the ones from today, of which actually there were quite a lot, and we can only load 20 at a time in the study, so we don't want too many. So go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, well, okay, that's that's enough for now. Actually, that's not enough because then they'll be in the wrong order. So I'm going to go one, these ones from the beginning. Okay. And we want it today, that 0210. And we don't want the sort of empty game which they drew right at the beginning. So... That was against a lone wolf. That was something else. That's Katasko and that's correct. That's Katasko and that's correct. And I don't think this one's correct. Yeah, that's not correct. Okay, so we copy it from here. Um, and we go into studies and click on, um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Not season six, we want. So I go into my studies. Geometry of chess, that's my favorite study, by the way. For those interested in chess, in normal chess, Geometry of Chess has got 120 likes on Lee Chess. It's my most popular study. So go into my studies, go into Tas Jasugi. Um, and I'm going to just add it. To this study. I think that's the easiest thing to do. So paste it in. It could be in a separate study, but I'm going to just paste it in to this study. I feel that's, I feel it belongs here. Uh, the Katask Offer Ways and Games. Um, now let's see. So I've downloaded some of them and let's just download the rest, which of which there are this many copy and add a new chapter, PGN, there we go, create chapter. So this is good, useful for people to see how you do it. You go add new chapter, PGN, paste it, PGN, up to 20 games, um, and you they're all added. So now with this study, uh, I'll just put the, the study link in the, in the Twitch chat. That's a study link. So that's 12 teen against Katas for the first 20 games. And up a ways in against Katask for the for the last bunch. Now let's see. Um, 
So just for example, operating fidelity, that was the final position in the last one. So now we can harness the power of the Lee chess analysis board. <coughs> to, so in this position, I can show you the mate I was thinking of, knight t2. The point being that if you back off, um, like king h2, something like this, then, well, actually, just rook f1 is strong, isn't it? Uh, white has got no th checks, and rook at h1 is checkmate. Um, but if you take this knight, then rook at h1 was my idea. King takes h1, then you take this, and then it blocks, and then rook at h2. That was my, my little mate. Um, okay, so I can now change the title of this ZH960 Katask to Sugi 99. Let's say to Sugi 99. and upper versus Katask on PyChess.org. So actually none of these games, um, hmm, chapter 33, why is that? That's weird. That should not be there, which makes me think I've made a mistake. Um, so how many, so, 46. So apparently the score was 13-13. That makes sense. 26 games. Yes, that's correct. Um, and we're going to we're going to look at them. We're going to orient them from the point of view of upper ways. And the way you do that is you press this um, this uh, little wheel, and the ones where he's black, you uh, change it from white to black. So, so for example, 22, 24. We just did. Um, so yeah, we could do that and. Then, then all of the games are now from Offer Wazen's perspective, for, or from Jasugi's perspective, uh, in this study. So Katask was the, the opponent, as it were, that these that these two giants had to, had to face up against, and he, and he equaled them both. So how fitting is that, um, as the player of the year, in a way. In, uh, two thousand and nineteen. And I have a separate study just devoted to some of uh, Katask's games from the from the chess.com um, event, which he won. And he played a series against the chess bras after that event. So check out that study too. And Katask actually even gave some of his own commentary. Not to mention, if you go to Katask's profile, he has a crazy ass study of his own, which is very much worth checking out. Okay, so is anything happening? There have apparently been some castling problems. Um, so that's something to be aware of. And the author says, obviously, his favorite one was this one. Of course it was. Um, <laughs> with the... Uh, okay, is this all visible on the screen? But if I go to... This is this visible? It's just about visible. Yes. So is this one um, sacking the queen and getting the queen on g8? And if I if I just and white is actually doing really nicely this whole game, gets the queen on, on the back rank. Um, maybe the only point where the engine has an issue with what he does is by going king king e2 instead of king f1. Because after king e2, it's worried about d5, maybe. Um, d5. And ideas of bringing the bishop out. So it didn't like king e2. It really liked king f1. Get the king as far away from, from the attack of the knight as possible. Get it out of the reach of the knight. But once he's got him out of the reach of the knight, it says it's completely winning. And uh, it's a false mate in 13, it declares. And in fact, uh, yeah, we see why. There's a blocker, knight there, check. You take the blocker. If you block again, you take it again. The moment you go here, you take the queen with check. Uh, it's all going to be over very soon. So, so queen takes a5 apparently was not 1h7. Apparently there were better moves. Knight to b4, what difference does that make? 
don't see any difference that, that makes. Oh, 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 I see, but I still don't see. Um, hmm. So maybe if you go knight to b4, bishop d3, there's knight takes, bishop check, takes, and bishop here, threatening queen here, checkmate, maybe. It's very unclear. But okay, really interesting game. Um, this will be, yeah, 1658. It's hard to tell which one it will be. Operation was white in this game. If I just choose a random one. Ah, I think I got it, yes. So I got it here on Leeches, so I can just analyze it a bit more carefully. So the move that Katas missed, and basically that was his only chance, was bishop d3. Then you can take this bishop. I was thinking, is it because of this? And not necessarily. Yeah, I'm not sure what it's seeing. Rook to g5. I'm not sure what it's seeing. Rook to g5, I get a whole queen. What are you doing on g5? Just pinching a knight. Like, really? I'm, I'm really confused here. But apparently black is doing well here. If I just run away... Oh yeah, I can't run away here. Oops. <laughs> um, and that explains why he stepped up. He obviously was afraid of this sort of idea. Um, so, yeah, that's the problem. So you do this, which would be very natural. Knight d4, okay, step up. Queen e2, king takes d4. Are you getting mated? Queen e2, king takes d4. D5 apparently. So you think you think E5 or C5, but apparently D5 is even stronger. But let's go beat Bishop F6 check. What what's the idea? King to C5. Okay, it it's not seeing forced mate, but it's it's looking ominous. So that would have been dangerous. Um, Instead, Katask went knight to, to d4, and then it's all hunky-dory, you defend. So the really important move, apparently, for black, I guess, is d5 to give his king an escape, and also to, to develop his pieces. Okay, so this takes, takes, king e2. Yeah, yeah, so king f1 doesn't make any sense. Uh, so king f1 is fine here, because... Black doesn't have a rook, but that explains why he came up here. You always got to be worried this king f1 if he has a rook. Um, so here, king f1 maybe was good. King d1 apparently was also okay, but it's hard to play that. I mean, king d1 he just takes the rook, then what? Seems uncomfortable. Um, anyway, so what happened in the game was this, and and Katas did play d5. I mean that's impressive. He gets bishop d4 in takes, but this, this is just too much. Okay, well thanks everyone for watching, it's been a fun Crazy House 960 stream, um, I hope you've all enjoyed it. We have had, um, if you just, uh, just to confirm, uh, offer, it was looking from the end, it's one all, and then one three, one four, so Katas winning three in a row, two four, two five, Three five, four five, four six, five six, five seven, six seven, seven seven, so seven seven, um, seven eight, eight all, eight nine, nine all, nine ten, ten all, ten eleven, eleven all, eleven twelve, twelve all, but there was one game which was dodgy, but yeah, twelve, uh, thirteen twelve, thirteen all. 12, 13 all, and then the one which was didn't count. 13 games all. Fabulous. Um, so if I go to the study, let's say 10, 10 between between Suki 99. Why can't I click the nine and Katask? 
12, 12 between Upper Wazen and Katas. So Katas really gave them, oh, oh my goodness, not, not 12, 12, 13, 13 after all that. Um, try to start, try again. Um, Okay, so um, hope you enjoyed watching this. Um, yeah, so it's, it's been hopefully an instructive stream, and also we've seen like some of the highest, highest level Crazy House nine sixty ever ever witnessed on this planet. So um, I hope you enjoyed. Bye.